Yes! Welcome to Aotearoa, New Zealand. We are in the central North Island, Rotorua, for the final stop of the Crankworx World Tour. And today we have the last event of the Rotorua stop. It is the Maxis Slope Style in memory of Magaza. This is a legendary event. It was rescheduled from yesterday, but it is a fitting close to this year's Crankworx. Now, we say in memory of Magaza because Kelly McGarry, one of the most legendary mountain bikers hailing from New Zealand, uh, was tragically killed in 2016. But every year, as has become traditional, they hold the Magaza train, all of the world's best slope style riders, throwing down in a huge train down this course. And it is a sight to behold. So, Earlier on today, we did have a delay. We apologize for being late in here, but unfortunately the wind kept us off the course. You can see there the boys throwing the grass, getting the anemeter out, measuring the wind. Nikolai Rogatkin, a strong advocate for getting this comp underway. He's always got the minerals and the stump to mix it up, but the wind has dropped down now and we have perfect conditions. If a little muggy, it's gonna heat up here very, very quickly. Joining me, to run through proceedings is a man who has taken on Rampage. He's taken on some of the biggest free ride features in the world. He prefers to let his riding do the talking, but unfortunately today he's going to have to do some talking. Connor McFarlane, pleasure to have you, Connor. G'day, yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, stoked to see these boys throw down and get this show on the road. Uh, it's a stacked start list as well, isn't it? Yep, we've got uh, all the boys here. We've got Lemoyne back, which is awesome. So, uh, yeah, should be pretty interesting to see what happens. Yeah, you look down there, so you've got Marcel Hunt. He got a wild card from Copenride. And alongside Lucas Schaefer and Bernd Winkler, three Crankworx rookies there to open things up. Griffin Paulson as well. Keep an eye on him. His star is rising in 2021. And then you look at the top end of the draw as well. And we've got all of the big guns. Emil Johansson, Eric Fenko, Nikolai Rogatkin. Uh, and as you said, uh, Thomas Lemoyne there as well. But Emil Johansson oh, yeah. is in phenomenal form. Yep, I mean, he's coming off, what, he's won the last four, or he's got four firsts in the past couple of years. And, uh, you know, he's just the confidence to be high and he knows what he can do and we all know what he can do. So if he can put that down, I think he'll be pretty confident. Well, you talked about the results. There they are. He is quite literally in a league of his own. There's five firsts of first, one sorry. second. Yeah. I think without the pandemic, it's fair to say that that would have been worth a triple crown in 2020. But he's trying to make amends now and he's going for the triple crown here. Nikolai Rogatkin, the only previous winner in 2018. Brett Reed had just missed out in 2017. And you can see what it meant to Rogatkin there. But there is a phenomenal amount of pressure on this third and final event. And there is no mistaking it. Emil Johansson is under a phenomenal amount of pressure today to get this done. Let's see how he's coping with it. I mean, it's obviously it's an additional pressure with everything. Like when it comes to the contest, it's a lot of factors that play into rule and it's a big task to try to throw down on a course like this or any given course. What we do, it's uh, everything is on the fine edge of not being possible for every rider basically like you, you, you're trying to push your own limit as far as you can without pushing it too far at any given day is, it's it's pressure really but what you do with it and how you play with it it's uh, it's different but it's always there well it's become customary this week to have a quote of the day and usually it would have come from you but we've decided that i think that one belongs to emil everything is on the fine edge of not being possible for every rider and it, it talks to just how fine those margins are yeah i mean they're just pushing the limits so hard and they know that 
if they want to do well, if they want to be up at the top end of this field, they've got to be, you know, on the edge of landing and riding away or not, you know, so they're all pushing as hard as they can. Yeah, the risks are real. Now, the riders like to think that they're the star of the show, but here in Road to Rua, the real star of the show is, of course, the course. Let's take a closer look at it. Yo, what's up, guys? Griffin Paulson here. Eric Fetko. We're about to drop into this insane slope style course. Let's do it. Let's go. Yeah. Starting here on a huge step down. Griffin with the back flip. And we got the big old shark fin. Another flip. Oh! Woo! Third to third hip. Oh, Griffin goes so high. And we got this cool little on off feature. Bar up, bar down. Oh, Griffin with the flat drop flip. Now we got the big long and low, just flying to this last jump. Boom. Another big old flip. Dude, that course is so fun. The course is running super good. So stoked to take you guys to the Maxis Slope Style Memory Magaza. It's going to be a blast. Let's go. Yeah. Two men who it's definitely worth keeping an eye on today, Eric Fedko and Griffin Paulson. But you've ridden this course quite a bit, haven't you, Connor? Yeah, I've done a few laps over the years. Um, Tommy Hay and the boys at Elevate do a pretty awesome job and mix a few things up most years and just keep it buttery. Um, pretty big course overall, um, but like flows super well. And it's not, I, I know on Innsbruck you spend a lot of time braking. This one's flat stick, isn't it? Yeah, pretty much you're just no brakes the whole way going as fast as you can. So it's cool to see them just milking all the speed. Okay, let's take a closer look at the features themselves. And this start was, when the course was first built in 2014, this was revolutionary. It's got quite a bit of kick on it, hasn't it? Yep, so this, um, nowadays, like, this is almost, we'll be seeing what used to be a finish line trick on this jump. So, you know, expect some pretty big tricks out of here. And then the first of these kickers, this is a monster, isn't it? Yep, so this jump, I've seen a photo of Kelly staying beside it with his arm up, way taller than him. We all know he's a monster, so he's a massive booter, so we'll see some big tricks on this. And then the intimidatingly named Surgeon's Table, this thing is really big. Yep, so trick on, and then it is a big drop off. Some of the boys are saying who've got, you know, dialed in their tracks are still a little bit nervous about tricking off it, so it's no joke. Yeah, one of the one of the riders with the most courage, Tom Eisted, saying that he's a little bit scared of it. Then this dirt to dirt gap, long and low. Yep, so big, long and low. We'll see a few tricks on that, and then they'll just be milking all the speed they can for this final Maxis Buddha. Yeah, this is the money booter. All of the best tricks, something to leave the uh, judges with at the end. That's what you want off that final jump. Uh, one man who's ridden this course more than most is the Frenchman who's returned to Rotorua this year. It's Thomas Lemoyne. This slope style course has been here for a long time, so I kind of remember a lot of things on it. So every time we come back here, it doesn't feel too stressful to be back at doing some tricks. And every year I kind of learn what I failed the year before. So I remember it and try to improve it. So every time I'm just trying to improve what was wrong the year before. That's the exciting part to me. Very interesting point to be made there, how much of a role experience plays for some of these riders. Now, if you've traveled to New Zealand, then you know that it has one of the most unique cultures and the opening ceremony or the pofiri as it's called is definitely one of those elements this is how the riders got on so the opening ceremony you know it's it's to welcome you onto our land onto our home bringing you onto our onto our whenua. Back in the old days, they used, to, they used to be the way of knowing if they were coming for a fight or if they were coming in peace. It's traditional, you know. Yeah! I just remember it being pretty cool, seeing like the culture of it. Like it's a, it's a very unique place we're in and a very unique history, or at least very different compared to where I'm from. So it's cool to see that difference and get to experience it. Okay, we have come to the moment where we get... Hung 
up your tires for the fight show on Rebel TV. And check out the best live events, feature films, and shows. Download the Red Bull TV app for free. And sign in to watch all of our content offline. Download the app now. Ready for a ride in style? A free ride mountain bike film combining progressive riding with cutting edge filmmaking. Once you start something, you gotta go all the way in. There's such a satisfying feeling. It's really hard to explain. A film oozing with the effortless style of some of the most talented riders of the Coastal Crew. Motive. Now available on Red Bull TV. Fear. A constant companion that even the mountain bike elite have to deal with. Your mind just starts kind of playing tricks on you because you can't do anything. Delve deep into the psyche of the athletes and get to know one of their biggest driving forces. Reverence, a journey into fear. Now available on Red Bull TV. So you can see the volcanic energy steaming out of Rotorua, and that's going to be reflected on the slopestyle course this afternoon. 13 of the world's best riders ready to throw down. And that is the man with the target on his back, Emil Johansson. You see the two Frenchmen there? You've got Tim Brasher and Thomas Lemoyne enjoying the spin bikes, keeping their legs warm. We're making our way up to the top. Nikolai Rogatkin, the only man ever to have won the slope style triple crown. He's got the rookie there, that man, Marcel Hunt, 31 years old, proving that anyone can be a Crankworx rookie. Let's take a quick look at the format for the Maxis slope style. It's fairly straightforward, not too difficult, but this is how it works. We call it the Crankhorse FMB Slopestar World Championship. And they're the biggest contest of the year. Here's how it goes. The 14 best Slopestar riders on the planet are here. Each rider gets two runs. Four judges will calculate the scores. At the end of the day, the best run counts and the rider with the top score takes the win. Let's go. So, Nongataha is the mountain. The Max's slope style is the course. We cut through a Marcel Hunt, the 31 year old out of Andover in the UK is in the gate. Relocated to Canada a couple of years ago and he's rediscovered his love of riding, Connor. Yes, it's great to see he, um, you know, sort of dominated, the, maybe not dominated, but did really well in the UK dirt jump scene and then just lost the passion and went, moved over to Canada and just sort of picked it back up and now he's here, got in via Copenhagen. Yeah, an eighth place in Denmark, and that's given him his first ever Crankwork start. If you're of advancing years and you're thinking about getting into uh, riding or you want to ride at the highest level, let this man be your inspiration. Marcel Hunt about to be the first man to open up the 2021 Maxis Slope Style in memory of Magaza. So, dropping in here, backflip bar to start it off, just hunting for speed for this next one. Big free. That's no joke, that jump as well. Big hook seven, ripping around. He started getting stuck Frank into Hammer. those at Tom Eisted's compound back in March. Yeah. Three bar up, Sui up, throwing it back old school, bar down. Up, turned in up. Big free down. Crank with all that speed, tucking the long low. We saw him clip that a couple of times. Flip whip on the final, nice. Very, very strong run to kick us off with, and we hadn't seen much of that in practice. No, so that's all, we sort of weren't really sure what they were going to do, we were wondering what they're saying for us, so that's awesome just to see a super solid run get to the bottom. What more can you ask for on your first run for Crankworx? Definitely nothing, look at him, that's an emotional moment for Marcel Hunt. So, flip bar down, big step down that one as well. Not to be messed with, beautiful three. And just really has got a unique style on that cork seven, just rips it around. 
He learned that on the airbag at Tom Eisted's place, and it's really paid off for him. He's only really had six months to get it dialed. Sounds like a long time, but on a trick that Big day. Three down. Didn't actually see that off in practice, so greased it, though. Big tuck on the long and low. Which he had cased a couple of times, so yeah. he was pleased to have cleared that. Yeah, flip up on the final. Perfect to pedals, no worries. It was pretty corked, wasn't it? The flip, the, the whip itself was kind of out to the side. Had yeah, really it was nice sometimes it gets hard to call the three whip and the flip whip. So always a difficult one coming out first because the judges are using you as a range finder. And the judges scattered around the world. We've got Anton Thalanda in Sweden. Grant Chopper Fielder as a head jump, head judge out of the UK. And the three judges in Squamish as well. Paul Rack, Craig Kinsman and Jeff Gulovich. Ragatkin and Hooper running over to congratulate him. 67.25. That's an indicator from the judges of what they expect to see today, the level. They're leaving themselves plenty of space above yep. that. Yep. And so we can't take any account. We can't look at other scores from other events. This is completely separate. And a 65, you know, could end up being a good score. Time will tell. OK, one of the most creative freeride mountain bikers on the planet, Lucas Schaefer. Big yeah. thumbs up good from him. Up. He's been a, a massive feature at Audi 9s, the, one of the most creative contest formats. More of a session, really. Going to be interesting to see how he gets on in a judged format. Yeah. 3-1 can down, known to be a stylish rider, so starting off strong there. Oh, big flatty tweak in there. Three times, in my opinion, one of the best looking tricks out there. Oppo three, smooth as anything. That was buttery, the landing. Three fast blown up, can down. Far up on the surgeon's table. Big backy down. We didn't and see that in practice. Yeah. And three in the long low. Flip whip, pedals, perfect. It was, wasn't it? Yeah. I thought you might have missed them for a second. Yeah. Two absolutely beautiful runs to open us up. And we talked about this, Connor, watching practice. Lucas was one of the riders really struggling to lay stuff together. He was just ghosting through the course. Yeah, so we just see him, like, styling through, almost like he's going through a set of dirt jumps. And then to see him, you know, put that, put that tail up in the flip at the end and all the other ones he's linked up, awesome to see. And so, so tidy. The execution yeah. is immaculate, isn't it? Yeah. Yep, so hopefully the judges will be uh, paying attention to that and get uh, points, points there. Tweaked that one so far, but you saw his foot just gently hunting for the pedal. Yeah. This is legit, isn't it? And this is no joke, this drop. I've been hearing riders saying that they're not normally nervous on flat flips, but because this one's so big, it definitely uh, gets the heart racing. 6.3 metres. Go and stand on a five-metre diving board and then think about riding a bike off it and back flipping. Yeah. They were half crank there into the last jump. Marcel Hunt and Lucas Schaefer finishing with the flip whip. So it'll be interesting to see. We'll be able to get a good flavour of where the judges are waiting this because I think Marcel was a bit more technical with that court seven, yep. but we had better execution with Lucas. Yeah, so. and beautiful style. So not to say Mar Marcel didn't have the style, but Lucas is something else. Yeah, that's that's pretty much his calling card. Yeah, stoked to see them so pumped. <laughs> 71. 71.75, so the judge is definitely giving a little more of a bias to the style and the execution there over the technicality. Thank you. <laughs> Fantastic first run under his belt. Lucas Schaefer can be very, very happy with that. So two riders down, and next up we have the third of our Crankworks rookies. And this one could be an emotional start for Bernd Winkler. The Austrian qualified for Crankworks in Whistler, the legendary joyride contest in 2018, but in practice, he fell off the whale tail and suffered a horrific Good back luck, injury. He's fought his way back and now he's riding better than ever. Big three bars started off. Flip up, long and low. Flip up, up. Really, you see him spot that landing there. Oppo three on the hip. Oh, slide over rotation. He's all right. Three up. Sui down. Struggling. Full extension. Struggling with a bit of speed there. Three down. Reset. Tuck. Oh, 
little bit of case going to crank here. Foot work, no worries. Well, three strong. runs from three. Definitely worth waiting for the conditions here. We know now that we've got perfect conditions, and all of the riders up top will be watching this and thinking, yeah, this is on. Yeah. Yeah, it's good to see. We've been waiting all day for this this breeze to die down, and they've finally had the hour of practice they needed to really get going. And I'd say they're pretty pumped, so finally be getting it underway. Important to qualify it and say, though, that these riders are throwing down with less practice than normal. Yep, for sure. So it's who can get the most comfortable and probably who's willing to step out of their comfort zone yep. the fastest. But So hang on a sec. We saw this is a flip whip here. That looks rigged to me. And we've got that little mistake here that you spotted yep. on the Oppo 3. So Oppo 3 is obviously that little bit harder, but I mean, he got out of it pretty smoothly. A lovely three on this drop. I'm just wondering, flip whip the the first jump, first booter up top, and the flip whip on the end. I'm wondering if we may have missed an officer. Well, we'll wait and see on the last one. Yes, I think. Yeah, it, it is. is an opposite flip whip. Nice. Oh, That'll be scoring well. Love to see. And the judges love a mirror image trick when you've got the same trick, regular and opposite in the same run. Yeah. An emotional one for Bernd Winkler as well. He's been on hold for three years, waiting for this to come through. But back at Crankworks now, and he's put a run together. Now it's time to see what the judges make of it. 62.5. So it looks like execution is at a premium at the moment. Yeah, there's obviously a few few cases there and that slide over rotate on that opposite 360 there. He was a little bit short on the long and low, wasn't he, yeah, right yeah, at the yeah. end? Yeah. And judges will be taking note of that and win, you know, if you have to crank to get speed for the next. But an opposite flip whip. Yeah, that's the other technical. boy's finished with flip whips, so yeah. yeah. So we know it's there, he's just gotta clean it up. Okay, one man. Who knows? No fear. Tom Eisted is so, so good. In the wind earlier, he's the first rider out on course at a Liskerda in Cornwall. He's got his own compound. He's had five days at the Franklin farm. Nick Franklin, the FMX's compound here, riding with Jed Milden. So he's got his eye in. What have we got? Flip tuck, step down. You know he's got more there. Big three on the fin. Cranking. Oh, flip tuck. I feel he's missed something there. He'd definitely want more. Cork seven on the hip. Jumped. Big tuck over the whole up box. First one that we've seen this year. Flip down. Beautiful intensity to this run. Big barrel. Bit of a case, though. Into the twist. Oh, so close. I feel... That slight case on the long and low really just put him off there. He needed a crank, didn't he? Yeah. He got a stick of dynamite in his back tyre as well. You heard the pop on that one. Yeah, he's all right, though. He's tough as nails. He'll be disappointed. Nikolai Rogatkin's been living. Like, it would be so easy for Rogatkin to feel like he's kind of taking the twister off him, but there's been no bigger champion of Tom getting that twister together than Nikolai. Yeah, Nikolai, yeah. Nikolai's the one that was convincing him to go for it. So flip tuck there. We saw him do a flip tuck on the on the first big booter as well. So on this jump here, so we know he missed something. I'm feeling we were maybe uh, going to see a double rotation there, but obviously just something wasn't quite right. Well, definitely so, the jump's big enough. Yeah. I remember this cork seven on this hip here. We haven't seen that many massive tricks on this yet, so that's a big one. And then flat flip down. And the angle, we're looking straight down at that. Yeah, and it yeah. looks like he's under-rotated every single time. And then you realize how far he's got to fall. Now, keep an eye on the back tire here on the landing. Just under-rotates, comes in 90 degrees short. Oh, oh there he goes. So close. It's like he's got a spring in the back oh, tire, just yeah. blows him over the bars. Uh -huh. Oh, well, we've seen him do that in practice, so we know he can do it. He's just got to clean up that jump before it, and I'm sure we'll be we'll see it next run. Well, 52.25 with a detonation at the finish. That yeah. is a run that has got promise, yeah. most definitely, for Tom Eisted. He'll be back up there. All the pressure on run two for the British rider.
Okay, next rider to come in yeah. is Griffin Paulson. Oh, fucking good rider. Young Canadian has been absolutely slaying it this year. And he had his debut in Silver Star. Let's take a look back at that run. This got him fourth place, Connor, and it was an incredible ride. Yeah, so it's kind of, I mean, he really just burst on the scene with Freak Mode, his video, and then came out of this contest and was absolutely shredded. Huge moves the whole way down. I believe that was a fresh learn just before the event. And it's a real mixture, isn't it? It's got it's all got the rotations, you've got the bars, the whips. Yeah, I'm pretty excited to see what he can do here. In the bar front to finish. So that was good enough for fourth place. He, he comes from Prince George yeah, in oh, British Columbia. And it is a town as far out and as isolated as they come. He's got a huge compound, totally self-motivated. But he's been looking good in practice. Let's see what he's got here. Oh, it's a big Franny, yes. Measures it perfectly. It's a big casual flip. Double flip. And we know he's got more there. Flip whip on the hip. Up both three up. Bar down. Flat. Into flat flip. And that is such a high intensity of tricks. Oh, no, the long back flip side there. That was beautiful. Into three double whip to perfect to pedals. Wow, what a run. The whole crew running out for that one. Griffin Paulson is pumped. Tom I said, Marcel Hunt, all coming out to congratulate him on that one. Bro, I go absolutely huge on front flip. Woo! That is some serious heat in that run there, and we know he's got more. Well, nice. If you go and watch any of his videos, if you watch Freak Mode and you look yeah, at his compound, boys, he's one of the few riders here. who's got access Woo. to jumps of this size yeah. on a daily basis. So he's not stepping up to ride this course. Yeah. Like this, that, like to be able to slow down a front flip on a big step down like that, enough to land perfectly, that's skill. Okay, and then this is the second big move, and we're only on the third jump. Double back heat. Landing perfect. Every single one, he, his air awareness, the timing of the rotation. Yeah. Flip whip used right up at the top there, way higher risk than that final boot up. Same as Tom I said, he's used the flip off the drop. And then the big old lawn dart, watching where the landing is. We have seen a few of the boys come up short on this jump, so I wonder if the front flip of anything helped him get over that nicely. Yeah, cutting it a little bit, not popping as much, yeah. getting the forward momentum. And then perfect three double whip. What a run. It's a very, very strong run from Griffin Paulson. Got a score in the low 70s from Lucas Schaefer at the moment. That is leading. I think this, we've got to be looking at an 80, haven't we? Well, I think, I think we'll definitely Go, be looking at a leader. OK, so Lucas Schaefer, 71.75 to Let's beat. See. Where are 80, the judges 80. going? Oh, oh they're you feeling that. generous. Yes, nice. 84.25. Very strong score to beat from Griffin Paulson there. Only the fifth rider in. So we have another eight still to drop, and that is a big, big target. Big, big smile for Griffin Paulson. 24 year old. That was the kind of nervous at the time. Looking very happy with that one, and well, he should. Now it's the turn of one of two Swedes, Max Fredrickson. Started his Crankworks career in slope here in Rotorua. It's fair to say he's been, he hasn't been looking that comfortable on the course so far. We'll see what he can throw down there. Three double bar two, unturned down. Double up. Cranking in there. Flip bar bar tuck. Putting all the combos in there. Flip work. Looking smooth so far. Three foot fast plan up, whip down. Suey up. Truck down. Perfect landing, crank it long and low. Bar tuck. What have we got? Three bar whip, perfect. Stoke. Look at that, the hand goes up for a man who was very, very vocal about not enjoying practice. He's just put a very strong run together there. And he looked pleased with it. Yeah, the amount of combos in there is insane. Everything was landed 
pretty spot on. Now you go back and you look at a couple of his results. He was 12th here in 2019. I think he was 12th in 2020 as well. Hasn't had good results, but he's got a really strong run there. And it's absolute mayhem in the air. He's smooth on the ground, but he's working so yeah. hard. Like Crank putting triple combos in there. There's a couple of triple combos, aren't there? Yeah, the, this one here as well, flip double bar to tuck. Making the most of that big air time on that one. Big old flip whip on the hip. Yeah, that was about the most relaxed, laid-back thing he did, yeah. wasn't it? I mean, doing it on a hip as well just makes that a little bit harder for the boys, but they make it look easy. Suey up, truck down. Looking so in control on that one. And as we've said before, it's such a big drop. You, you, will, you will see riders only doing essentially their safety tricks there. Yeah, well, I mean, who knows? If we're real lucky, we might see something. But yeah, a lot of the riders have been saying they're not going to, you know, try anything too crazy on it. And then three bar, bar to whip. Perfect. Big smile there from Max Fredrickson. First one of those, I've got to say, I'll be honest, in two days of practice, that's the first big smile I've seen from Max Fredrickson. <laughs> he hasn't looked happy on this course. So good to see him get a solid run under his belt. Oh, wow. 88 Whoa. points. We have a new leader, Max Fredrickson, goes into first place. All those combos really paying off, landing clean. And you've got to say he's already guaranteed himself a higher place finish than he did in 2019, 2020. I would imagine so, so yeah. His fortunes have changed here. Yeah. Marcel Hunt congratulating him. So really, really interesting. Judges loving the intensity of Max, Max Fredrickson's run. Got a second at Red Bull Roof Ride earlier in the year, but his Crankworks results, he's been struggling to break the top 10, so that really is a big result for him. Next thing we got Lucas Hooper out of Switzerland, out of Niederwegenen. Swiss national champ in 2019, rookie of the year in 2018. That was his big break, he took a win at Omar Esquino, the gold at FNB event. Three with that all, just finding that pedal there, pumping full speed. Very, very smooth on that whip. Ronnie Baba, whoa! Just under rotating, but managing to hold on to it. Cranking out, double whip. Three fast one up, bar down. Three down, here, yeah, down apart. Truck down, oh! Holding on to it. Bar long and low. And the Perfect. fit whip to finish. The difference, I called that wrong, the difference between the decade Whoa. and the down whip. Yeah, so three down whip, the, uh, more of a tail whip and a 360, whereas the decades, uh, you just spin just you, really. Just round the bar. So we did, I did notice there we got two double whips. Maybe one's opposite. Let's have a the look replay at it. will show. So Lucas Hopper, looking very pleased with that one. It was lovely to see, we've got seven runs greased start to finish bar now. Bar. So this is slightly unrotated, but he managed to ride out of it all good. Lot, would have lost a little bit of speed there, though. But it's not at that critical section of the course. He's got the slower point there that yeah. he can actually mask that with. So that's the three downward part. Track him down. Little bobble there, but all good. Just getting that cranking to get that speed again. A little light on the trick on the long and low. Yeah, we've seen him do more in practice. But then perfect flip whip, finish it off. Found the pedals pretty early on that one. Yeah. You can almost see the relief in his face there. <laughs> I think it is for everyone at this stage. There's still a little light on practice, so this is still sending it with only probably around 10 runs yeah. for each person yeah, over the course of the two days. He looks happy with it, though. Yeah, so 88 is the score to beat from Max Fredrickson. Let's see what Lucas Hopper can get. Oh, well, we're waiting for those. Oh, 78.25, so yeah. third place for Lucas Hopper. Slots him in to third place. Just ahead of Lucas Schaefer, just behind Griffin Paulson. So Max Fredrickson, just over half the field down, he can start to feel very, very comfortable with his run, I'd say. But remember, we're going in reverse order of ranking, so the heavy hitters are yet to drop. 
one of the riders who's really started to make a name for himself over the last couple of Crankworx events. It's Paul Coudert and Lissac Emore Super crisp style, super committed. He's getting surgery on his wrist after this event. Guys. I believe so, yes, so uh, pushing through the pain. He's got really strong double flip game as well, isn't he? Big flip whip. Oh, yes. Oh, come on. So the execution there going to cost him. Into the double. Yep. Like I said. Hanging in there. Opposite 3 1 Hanny X. Love that trick. We are far down. This is where the tricks are coming thick and fast. Flip down. Franken. Big back on the long and low. And Doc Cox said to finish it nice. Really lovely. Didn't rush that seven at all. No, just snuck it in there. And I saw he's pumped. Saw him practicing that straight flip on the uh, the first step down a lot in practice. So good to see him throw that whip in there. Well, we talked about the energy in the pre-show that we're going to see on this course, and we've seen it repeatedly. It's really the momentum in this final is starting to build up, isn't it? You can see what it means to everyone to put these runs down. Paul Kudel looking very, very impressive. Eighth rider down and eight runs very, very clean. So here he has his flip whip that he was just bobbled the foot, but he still landed perfect, but bobbled on the catch. Managed to get the speed for the next. Do you think the judges are going to mark him down for the cranks there? I mean, if you can do no cranks, I think you'll, you know, score a little bit better, but I don't think they'll be going too harsh. A perfect double. No hesitation on that whatsoever after that little mistake at the top. Still fully committed. Yeah, big, stylish, up 3 one hand X. What's the centerpiece of this run for you? Oh, he's got a few of them, I'd say. Start, middle, and end. Yeah, the oppo three and the seven yeah. and the double backy. Yeah. And I'm a big fan of the flip up on the step down as well. So, solid run, I reckon. Not to be scoffed at. A lot of heavy hitters in here and a lot for the judges to think about. That an, is that an oppo cork seven as well? Yeah, it is. It is. Natural is counterclockwise. So, oh, hold the front page. That might go all right. That is massive. These boys just making the oppos look so smooth these days, almost hard to tell sometimes. That, that was it. There was no awkwardness there whatsoever. In fact, he did it so smoothly, I, I'd completely assumed yeah. it was natural direction. Didn't even question it. Obviously, the wrist, wrist is holding up. I put Fredrickson and Hunt all watching on. They're desperate to see the score here. This could take us into the 90s. The judges may have gone a bit early on Max Fredrickson's 88 here because they haven't got a lot of room to move now. Yes, they can mark down some of the execution, maybe. 80.75. Oh, I was way out on that one. Paul Couder, nod of the head. Maybe the personal achievement wasn't quite as great as the... There are a few few execution parts that he can tidy up, so he can look into that for his next run. And yeah, this is definitely let a little bit of air out of his tyre there, the score, I think, so... But like you say, if he can tidy up that first drop into the uh, second feature, then he could be there. Now, one man, great to see him returning. Turu Turua, Thomas Lemoyne. We call him the Renaissance man because he can ride quite literally anything. We've seen him give an incredible account of himself in pump track and speed and style. Fourth in 2018, second in 2019, fourth last year. One of the regulars here in Rotorua. Looking, I mean, he's always steely focused, isn't he? It is, yeah. And just not far off our knee surgery, I hear. A month back from an arthroscopy on his meniscus. So he said that when he went into MIQ, the managed isolation quarantine that's compulsory to get into New Zealand, he could barely walk. He spent two weeks rehabbing it in that isolation. And now he's back oh, yeah. and smashing it. Three unturned down to start it off with. Three tuck, that's big jump for three tuck. Cranking in there. Double flip, spotting the landing midway round. X on the long run, a double flip. Three double bar, looking smooth. Gap in the whole thing, stalling it out. Fronty up. Three down. 
Struggling for speed there. I did want no, the front oh, end. Oh, so no. too much speed out of it. That was a cumulative effect, wasn't it? The yep. front tee onto the uh, surgeon's table. Oh, no, and that flat landing. Oh, might be a bit sore on the knee. Oh, it's early days to be on that. Oh, and he's in pain. Oh, oh. no. Heartbreaking. Thomas Lemoyne, he's worked so hard to get here. We've seen him in the finals of Speed and Style. We've seen him in the semi-finals and the bronze medal match of the pump track. And then in his first and foremost event, first run, he's hurt his knee. He started off strong with a three unturned down. We know he's got more there if he can get back up. And then three tuck. Big, a big jump for big that Big jump one. for a trick like that. And a double, you can see him spot that mid, midway through. Inch perfect. Absolutely immaculate. Three double bar. And then this is where the problems start. It's the front flip. Oh, sorry. So he had plenty of speed there, and then the front flip threw him forward a bit, landing a bit deep there. And just not quite managing to carry that speed. Still landing fine, but yeah, did, I imagine the, yeah, the 360 just hopping up would have got him over that drop. And then barely getting the front wheel over. I mean, normally a case like that wouldn't be too bad, but when you're you know, straight off a knee, knee surgery. Yeah, you haven't got that strength there to protect the joint. Yeah. You sort of, if you've been light on it, that was the Elevate crew, Giant Motherworld, Tom Hay, Emerson Wilkin, all there. Now he's missing a peak after his crash in uh, Speed and Style. But Timothy Branger, aka Tim Bringer, out of Vence in France. The French gentle giant, so, so smooth on his bike. Powerful as well. Brief quad bar down. Quad this guy's bar. a beast. To flip bar. We've got double flip top, huge extension on that. Look at this, bringing the noise. Double whip, wrapping it round. Hop over up, up, bar down. Double bar up. Whip down. Oh! So, so close. That was like a raging torrent yeah, of tricks, wasn't it? It was just from start to three quarters of the way through, he was absolutely smashing that run. Yeah, just basting those bars and whips around. And whip on that drop, this big, big drop. Just a bit, maybe a bit short, slipping those pedals. Only now I think the adrenaline's worn off. He's showing a little bit of a knock there. I'm not surprised. He looked, he really wanted that one, didn't he? Take a look it's at it. Go one. Quad bar. Oh! That is a huge move out of the start game. And then this, the double flip with the massive extension. Look at that. Huge. landing. Would have been a fascinating score to yeah. give us an idea because it is, it's loose and it's rough around the edges. So the execution that we've seen rewarded by Here the judges. Go. Does he case? Yeah. Oh, yeah, so a bit of a case. Blow in the feet. The whip down, he just has Oh, so didn't quite get that catch there. Just you clamping the feet. Back. Oh, so. Six and, and a half meters. Mm. You've got to be able to get your feet on the pedals, otherwise, yeah. it's going to be a very, very painful one. Managing to ride it out, but uh, I imagine it still may have been a little bit sore. Yeah, he's still got the uh, scarring there from Speed and Style on his nose, I think. That was the first crash, and then he took another one in pump track as well. He's, he's definitely taken his fair share of uh, offs. He in has, the but, of the week. I mean, you just got to look at him. He's an absolute beast of a man. Yeah, if anyone can take that. Now, Nikolai Rogatkin, if any man has the minerals to take on a big course, it's this man. Let's take a look at his run from British Columbia. He's still so, so strong on a bike, isn't he? You can never count him out all, so he had that huge crash, but then managed to get back up. And the only Regatkin could do this. Yep. Only Nikolai could get yep. back on and then ride like this. Big cash in. Corks him out. He's so dialed with his rotations. 3x down. Look Double whip that. to finish off. It's a phenomenal achievement for Nikolai Rogatkin. 
Kia, the Triple Crown winner in 2018, the only man ever to have done it. I spoke to him earlier in the week, we were commentating on speed and style together. He said, I'm going to try my best to beat Emil, but I don't know if it's possible. So Cork 7 started off, perfect landing. That was immense. Oh, super seat one hand, Moto inspired, into the cash roll X. Cash seat. Getting all those rotations. And combos in. Flip up. Three down. Tuck up. What have we got? 3x down. Carrying that speed. Big fronty tuck. Boxing clever. Going for that fronty. So twister. And where Tom Eisted fails, Nikolai Regan nice. can succeed to that twister to finish. Boom, smashes it out of the park. Uh, it's the classic Regatkin wow, post celebration. It, that was it. Billy Meekham in there, Tom Eisted in there. He's pumped. And Timothy Bringer. Love Regatkin's attitude. He's always as pumped on his runs, pumped on his mate's runs. That was a huge E. So, and 88 from Fredrickson is the score to beat. And do you think it felt a little bit to me there are a couple of spots in there where Regatkin can improve that as well? For sure. I mean, We've seen, I've seen a bigger combo on the cash roll there, and we all know what he probably wants on this final jump. But starting it off there, perfect cork serve. And that as well, huge, really mixing up the trick bag there. Really good style. So cash roll X. Spotting that landing. And like you said, he's got the rotations measured perfectly. It's mechanical almost. Yeah, so mixing up the combos there with the seat grab. Oh, foot coming off there. Managed managing to, to get back like, how's again, that though? for air awareness? And not panicking, not giving up on that yeah. one. You see it from that angle and you barely notice. It's just showing his experience. And then we said it, boxing clever here. Huge fronty tuck, that's a big combo on that jump. Not losing any speed to make sure he's got the pace for that, the twister. And then the 1080. Looking through that one, he's searching. You can't Beauty. come out of that at 720 and spot the landing, can you? You've got to keep your head in that rotation and committed. Yeah. Home run oh, for Nikola Rogatkin. <laughs> so, the passionate American with some Russian heritage. Instantly recognizable for his cannonball helmet, but he's joined by uh, Timothy Branger. So 88 to beat. What do you reckon, Connor? Got to beat it, surely. 90 no, go! There you go, yes. first 90 yes. of the day. That is a huge, huge score for Nikolai Rogatkin. Yes, sir. And it's a warning shot for Eric Fedko and Emilio Hansen. Suddenly, they've got something to live up to. Yeah. Nikolai Rogatkin means business, Connor McFarlane. Yeah, I'm excited to see what uh, he brings in, in the second oh, round. Interesting, the cameraman found the Triple Crown trophy then. Rogatkin could be the spoiler on that one with one could, side of could, yeah. like, <laughs> It's not going to take much more to put that score into an untouchable zone, isn't it? Yeah. So a new leader with just two riders left to drop. Nikolai Rogatkin is in first place with 92 points. Never one to uh, play it down. He definitely knows that he's done well there. But as we said, we're pretty sure he's got more there. But it leaves two of the most cerebral and close or? intense riders in Slopestyle left to drop. Eric Fedko will go first here in 2020 out of third. Then Innsbruck, he took third as well. One drop off the podium this year at Innsbruck, but then he made amends and moved up into second in Silver Star. So I think it was widely spoken about that he had his best run ever in British Columbia. Yeah, and I mean, that's awesome for his confidence coming into this event. Yeah, 23 years old. Still got plenty ahead of him. Yeah, and he's... He's those breaking dust his on. riding down. He's, it's almost like he's cracked the matrix on pressure too. He knows that he can only control the controllables. So he, I don't right, think, boys. you said it earlier, he's not trying to chase him in. He's just trying to play to his strengths. See what he can do. Free whip down, perfect pedals. Free, steezing it out. 
Three super seat. So dialed on that track. Looking so Three so well. Well. Oh, little foot bobble there. No worries though. Three up. Bar down. Oh, big three downside up. Oh, needed to find the pedals. Yeah, like that. Just didn't quite get those pedals there. Yeah, He'll be disappointed, but he's riding away clean, one piece. We had a discussion about this earlier on, and we were talking about the fact that he concentrated all of his practice time on the upper section of the course. And I wondered if it was because he wasn't happy in the wind down here. You said you thought that maybe he was focusing on something over that big hip. Yeah, well, we did see what I thought he might have been focusing on the hip, that three bar work, because we didn't see him do that until the end of practice. So, yeah, maybe not having enough practice down the bottom played in there. Well, also, he didn't have the pedals and he was going off a 6.3 metre drop. Yeah, so you just he wouldn't have had the time to recoup after that three downward path and get ready for a trick off the drop. But here, look at how's the extension on that? Perfect. It's kind of a, one of his signature moves. The Indian seat grab three. Yeah. And so this is what I feel he was working on a bit up the top. Three bar whip. Oh, the style. And he had a little bit, it looked like he might. Wee bobble. Yeah, wee yeah. bobble coming out of it. So here's where we had the mistake three. So just misses that foot and just not quite enough time to recoup. I mean, we're watching that in slow-mo and it didn't look like he had long. You can imagine what that felt like in real time. Yeah, just a wee pedal kick to get down there. You've got to be in flow state to yeah. stay relaxed in that moment, not panic and then just jump off that huge drop. Smart move though. We wouldn't want to see him come up short again like Lemoyne, so smart to pull out. Only the second rider we've seen drop a run. Oh no, third rider. Sorry, I forgot about Timothy Branger. So. Ranger, Lemoyne and Fedco, the only riders not to get first runs down. Nikolai Rogatkin, all smiles though. But it's not. I'm so happy you're okay. Oh, it was a little bit windy during your run actually. I thought I, I would stop, I actually I got some speed so I just kept... Dude, so one rider left to drop and it is Emilio Hansen. Let's have a head over to the Maxis bike check to find out what he's rocking today. Hi, my name is Emilio Johansson. I'm in Rotorua for Maxi Slope style in memory of Magasa 2021. It's the final event of the season and this is my bike check. The Trek Ticket S, Rock Shocks, Fork and Shock, Maxis tires. I got a Pace 2.1 tire in the rear and a Icon 2.2 tire in the front. And I also find the Pace one to be a bit more rigid from side landings. Whenever you, it happens that you over rotate or something, I have full trust in it staying on. Classic slope style. You need a crank stopper to stop the cranks from spinning when doing tail ups and stuff. And then I got some special homemade chain guide in the back. Cockpit, I have a mechanical gyro that goes all the way down to the caliper and I got an Avid Essel road caliper. I like the road one because it uses a bit less travel. And my signature MJ grips from Census. I don't really tend to change my setup over the season. For slope style, you work on all these maneuvers in the air, being consistent with your settings, make sure you don't get thrown off in your technique and makes training and contests a bit easier rather than jumping from different bikes and settings all the time. Thanks for watching. This is my bike check for Maxi Slope Style in Rotorua and hope everyone is watching the live stream and we could bring a good show for everyone to watch. Well, I don't think you have to worry about that, Emil. We're already into the drama. This is what's happening. Emil Johansson has two of three wins this season. Nikolai Rogatkin is the only Triple Crown winner. He took it in 2018, and right now, he is in the lead in Road to Rua. But look at him, so magnanimous. He wants to see a good run from Emil. All he wants to do Wing is push Emil win. as far as he can, and that's what he's done with that 92 score, Connor. Yeah, love the camaraderie there. Nikolai always just wants to see his peers do well. And uh, yeah, this is no different. Out of Falun in Sweden. Phenomenal rider, just 22 years old. He's already overcome an autoimmune disease that saw him stripped of all of his energy. But it's brought him back and it's almost, it allowed him, like that, 
that disease allowed him to sort of focus on his riding on what made him a good rider, on how he wanted to use his energy and how, what tricks he wanted to learn. And we made a joke earlier on, Connor. We said that he's probably forgotten more tricks than most of these riders have learned already at 22. Yeah, he's just got that many in his bag. He actually mentioned before that he likes long courses because he's got so many tricks that he wants to get out there for the judges to see. <laughs> he can extend this one a couple of jumps further into the car park. So look at him. Emilio Hansen, super, super focused. His first run, his first attempt at the Triple Crown. Three bar downward, landing perfect. Immaculate as ever. Three bar and turn down, getting the combos in there. Oppo triple, Ooh, a little bit harsh, but oh. Double whip there on the hip. So just proving you can bar do it each way. Nolly three down. Oppo three bar up to flip down, showing he's got all the tricks there. Big 3 one can slowing it down there at the end. To three, opposite three, opposite double whip. And it's it's such a different style of riding to Regatkin. It's so, so technical where Regatkin's got those big showcase tricks like the Twister. It's all in the details with your hands. Yeah. He's got so many opposites, but they're almost hard to tell. He looks so normal on them. Well, he, I think he made more of a meal of the double regular direction than he did of the opposite triple. triple. <laughs> so some brilliant, brilliant, brilliant runs down, but Emilio Hansen has got one down safe. He needs 92 for that, and there were a couple of little bobbles if, if you're a judge and you're looking for differences. You really do want to pick it apart, you can. I mean, that perfect, can't pick anything apart there. Three bar, unturned down. There's a couple of cranks into this one. But like you say, so smooth, yeah. so composed on They're that just triple. Slightly sideways there, so just cranking to get the speed again. But that's, we're not even seeing many people do normal triples, so opposite triple. It's just it's huge, insane. isn't it? Yeah. And the danger for the judges in this situation is judging Emil against himself and not against the rest of the field. Yeah. Just wrapping out a double there, showing you can do go both ways easily. Flip down. Only it's a cool. couple of riders have got that. It's cool to see him mixing it up. He's more of a 360 guys. It's awesome to see him do that flip. See that slowing it down there with that foot out the back. <sighs> oppo three, oppo double. That, that is a is huge combo. And so so difficult. So so difficult. Yeah. So we saw Griffin Paulson do the three double whip. This is the opposite of that. Just ridiculously technical. And we know that. Nikolai Rogatkin's twister, as impressive as that 1080 is, it's the law of diminishing returns. He's been doing that. That was the trick that won him the Triple Crown in 2018. So there is, there are very few other riders doing it, but if you're doing it constantly, the judges have seen it before and it doesn't have that value. So Emil Johansson, where's the score going? 95.75. Oh. He has one hand on that trophy in front of him. The Triple Crown is just meters away from him. Every rider has one run to try and stop him doing it, but right now... You don't fucking get scores under 95, do you? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Regatkin tells him, Emil Johansson doesn't do sub-95 scores. A phenomenal rider. It's, it's a tribute to just how good he is, Connor. Yep, and like he said, you know, he's got those tricks to mix it up, so... We saw the, I don't know if I've ever seen a opposite 360, opposite double whip out of him, so. <laughs> Quite phenomenal. And I can only, Hansen. I can only imagine he's got a few more in there if he needs. Well, like you said, he's asking for longer courses. You know he's got more tricks. Yep. So the Swede looking very, very comfortable, but you've got to wonder, Regatkin knows how strong he is. Regatkin knows what he said it at the very beginning. I asked him about it during Speed and Style. Can you beat Emil? And he said, I'll try my best, but I'm not sure that it's possible. Yeah, I mean, we know he, we know he's got more in the book, so I'm pretty excited for this next run. Oh, and that, that's it, isn't it? There's no better way to take out a Triple Crown than with a real spectacle. He's got a smile on his face. He's relaxed. So these are the standings after that first run. Emil Johansson, three points clear of Nikolai Rogatkin. That's as close as Eric Fedko got in BC. Max Fredrickson, a surprise run from him to put him into third place. Griffin Paulson, I had him in my podium predictor in second place. So I want to see 
some more combos out of him and moving up. Uh, Lucas Schaefer, a great ride from him, just outside the top half of the draw, but the other rookie as well, Marcel Hunt, doing yeah. very well. And we had Paul Coudier there in fifth, and we know he made a wee bubble, so we know he's got more as well. Yeah, I think Tom Eisted as well. I think there could be something more out of him coming yeah. from his like, And let's not forget, uh, we've got Timothy Branger as well, the Frenchman. If he can put that run together, the execution maybe wasn't perfect, but the intensity and the urgency yeah. of that run. And the amount of combos in there. So there's a lot of guys there who didn't quite make it to the bottom that could put massive runs down. OK, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll have the second runs here at the Maxis Slope Start in memory of Magaza. We're going to leave you with some of the replays of the man who's currently sat in first and has one hand on the Triple Crown. You want it, I got it, big man when I cop it. Experience select live events in a whole new way on Red Bull TV. Athletes profiles and KPIs. Start lists and results. Head-to-head -head analysis and animated guides. Track information and obstacles. Keep up with your favorite athletes and artists. The new sidebar is available exclusively on Red Bull TV. There's a lot of people that ride bikes that don't fully understand the struggle of building something completely awesome. The art and science of trail building. The hard work pays off for sure every time. Through the eyes of rider and builder. Available on Red Bull TV. Rob Warner. I'm taking the best young athletes on a quest to ride the world's greatest trails and meet the people who live in some of the wildest places on earth. Never had myself down as an Attenborough type. Yes. Ah, get off! <laughs> <laughs> the first sight of the Himalayas. You know, lions take the weakest and slowest rider. Oh, my word! Rob Warner's Wild Rides, now available on Red Bull TV. Anywhere around here you can get a cappuccino. Welcome back to the Maxis Slope Style in memory of Magaza. This is the third and final stop of the Crankworks World Tour, and it is the final event of the year. What a show we've got on already. We've had some fantastic runs down. I'm joined by Conor McFarlane in the booth here. Tom Eisted popped a tyre. Uh, we saw Nikolai Rogatkin landing the 1080, and we saw Emil Johansson lay down a breathtaking run. Yet again, Connor. Yep, uh, always... Uh... Always surprising yeah. us that, especially with that last track there, I wasn't wasn't expecting that. But the amount of regulars and opposites, it's kind of hard to define. They almost look so normal these days. Okay, these days. let's take a closer look at the run and see exactly what he did to garner that 95 point plus score. Started off pretty strong up at the top. So three bar down whip, a big combo off start. Into another triple combo, three bar, unturned down. But this is where it starts to get really yeah, technical. There's a huge combo there. Opposite triple into regular double. And you said it during the commentary, no one else is doing regular triple whips. Just rejection. <laughs> and then this huge one to finish it off with. Opposite three, opposite double whip. It's it's immense. And it, we talked about it, he has such a huge arsenal of tricks. He could literally come out and change up that entire run from top to bottom and still put a run down in the 90s, probably. Yeah, exactly. So, like we were saying before, he wouldn't mind a longer course because he's got so many tricks, which is the insane thing that he can pick and choose what he uses. Well, he's had five wins in a row, and he it looks at the moment like he's going to get his hands on that Triple Crown trophy. But there's one man standing between him and that. It feels like Nikolai Rogatkin had a very, very good run. Yep. I mean, we all know he's got more, but he started off very strong with his corks here. Perfect landing. That is a big, big trick to yep, kick off, isn't it? a huge trick. And then I love the Moto-inspired Superman secret of one-hander. Into the cash roll, X up. 3x down, and then there's a big combo on the long and low here. Big funny tuck. And then the signature. Twister to finish it off. 
It's almost a cash roll 1080, isn't it? Well, it finishes It finishes exactly like a cash roll, so you've got to be good at caches to spot your landing. Do you think, I mean, he used, what we didn't see in the replays there, he used cash roll, uh, I think it was tuck, was it? He did a cash roll X up to a cash roll uh, seat, grab. seat grab, yeah. And do you think that... I mean, different combos in each one. And the C-grab one is kind of weird because you're reaching out of the rotation. Yeah, well, I mean, I have seen him link those together. So maybe, just maybe, we can see a double combo cash roll up there. And then we know he's got more that he can add in there instead of that. So, you, Well, the big question is, has he got three points more that he can add? Yeah, who knows? I mean... There's talk of a, uh, a pretty big spin on the final jump, so pretty excited for him to get down there and okay, wind one we, up. We only saw a couple of offs in there. Uh, Thomas Lemoyne went down, Timothy Brownjoe yep. went down, and Eric Fedko pulled out at the end there. But one of the most dramatic ones, undoubtedly, was Tom Eisted following in Nikolai Rogatkin's footsteps. He wanted the uh, twister on this last jump. Yeah, big tire explosion. We did see him do, it, do this in practice, so we know he's got it. I feel he was just maybe a little bit uncontrolled beforehand, just needed to, you know, reset and... Snatching at it yeah. a little bit. It was full stuntman, wasn't it? You saw the explosion, then you just got blown out of the front yeah. door. Yeah, a little bit disappointing there, you could tell, but he's in one piece and uh, he'll be back up to, to send it for us. Okay, well, that's the riding for the moment. We're going to get stuck back into the second runs in a moment, but uh, the trophy that is probably most coveted on Crankworks is given away at the end of the year to the most all-round and versatile riders in both the men's and women's fields. It is the king and queen of Crankworks. You've got to be a phenomenal rider throughout the season. You've got to have that consistency, and you've got to have it through dual slalom, pump track, speed and style, and you you get points off in the men's, you get points off the slope as well. It is a phenomenal achievement. And on events like this here in Road to Rural, where we've had so many, the schedulers packed it into all Friday, Saturday events. You've had two events a day. It's actually a real test of stamina as well. Yeah, and especially, you know, going for the King and Queen, that's a lot of events just to pack into a few short days. Obviously the weather made it a little bit harder, but um, this is This go. is confirmation of the men's. 400 points clear at the end of the season. Bas van Steenbergen, a phenomenal performance. But interestingly, on the strength of his performances here in Rotorua, Tohoto Riki Pene makes it into second place just ahead of Jackson Fruit. And that was a really, really solid reward for the way he's ridden in both downhill, dual speed and uh, dual slalom and pump track. And then on the women's side, making it not only as the queen, but also doubling it up as a boyfriend, girlfriend, king and queen. It's via Verbeek, uh, just ahead of Keelani Hines and Harriet Burbage-Smith. And we've got both Baz and Via with us now. They're on the headset. Congratulations to you both. A phenomenal achievement. Look at those smiles. That says <laughs> everything. Uh, it, how did you go about it, Baz? Did you have a plan at the start of the season that you were like, I'm focusing on king? Yeah, for sure. I definitely trained super hard um, coming into Innsbruck and everything. Um, that round didn't quite go the way I was hoping to, but I figured uh, being at home in BC would give me a bit of a, a bit of a bonus to, to keep going. And yeah, obviously it worked out pretty good. Now, Via, I've heard that you guys have got a uh, pump track set up in the front yard. Does that help? <laughs> Uh, it definitely helps this guy. Um, <laughs> thank you for building it, boss. It definitely helps me sometimes, but um, he definitely built it for himself. <laughs> <laughs> it's a technical one. He like built it exactly how Crankworx would build, like tricky corners and like replicate stuff. And yeah, it's yeah. pretty fun. It, it felt coming into Rotorua, Bass. You, it felt like you'd got this sewn up because no one else had travelled. Uh, a lot of the top five weren't going to come, but it was the opposite for you, Vi. You came in here and there was a really, really strong battle. Did you feel the pressure? Always, yeah. You always try to forget about the pressure and the point score, and you try to just go for each event as usual. But you still feel it, and honestly. Yeah, stress, sleep, everything kind of goes down the hill and crashes happen. And yeah, it's definitely a rock and roll um, roller coaster in emotions. 
Okay, question to you both here. You are officially king and queen of Crankworks, but so it's kind of a joint trophy in a way. But I think via you scored slightly more points. Does that give you more bragging rights? <laughs> yes, definitely. And I'm two time, so oh, he's got some oh, oh, <laughs> Love it, chucking a bit of shade on Bass. Congratulations oh. to both of you. Thank you so much. The spectacle you've put on in 2021 has been phenomenal. Thank you. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Take care. Enjoy the rest of the show here. We've got a couple of, well, we've got a solid run uh, of slope style left, and it, it promises to be incredible, Connor. Yep. So um, we've obviously got a few of the boys that didn't get down as well, so they'll be looking to stick that second run and get a score on the board. And pretty excited because there's some big names in there that didn't get down in the first run. So be good to see what they can bring out. Yeah, the intensity is building. But for you, the viewers at home, we can just relax for a second because we're going to head over to two of the biggest. I was going to use the word clowns, but they're definitely not clowns on the bike. It's only when they get some free time. This is the pivot wide world of worldwide sports. Tongue twister. <laughs> Hi there, and welcome back to another episode of the Worldwide Wide World of Sports. I'm Ed Masters. And I'm Matt Walker, and we're here for Crankworks Rotorua 2021. Now, it's been a hot minute since we've done one of these, so we're going to kick things off by grabbing some new work uniforms. Well, now that we look the part, how about we take you on a tour of Rotorua and what it's famous for. Rotorua is famous for... Geothermal activity. A beautiful lake. Rotorua might be famous for crankworks, but it's also famous for roadworks. One event we've got to look forward to is the dual slalom on Sunday, where riders are racing head-to-head -head on identical courses in a winner-takes-all format. One to watch uh, this week could be Bass Van Steenbergen. He's currently on form leading the King of Crankworks at the moment, so I think he's going to be on fire. Hard to beat. So the downhill race which is coming up actually shares a few characteristics with zip lining. All out speed, aerodynamics and adrenaline. Now who have we got to look forward to watching in this race, Matt? Um, my rider to watch this week would be Tor Toriki Penny. He's been on fire in the World Cup circuit lately. He's a local boy and I think he's on for a good one. Now, not being ones to break tradition, for this week's stunt, I've decided to come out here and hit a jump called Gavin on a toboggan. Well, that might not have been the success we were looking for, but sometimes that's just how things go. Thanks for tuning in. We have been the Worldwide Wide World of Sports. I'm Matt Walker. I'm Ed Masters. Good, Good night. night. I feel a little bit underdressed watching that. <laughs> Need to go to the op shop. <laughs> Fantastic suit and some pretty good predictions. Would you have hit Gavin, though? I don't think uh, on a bobsled like that. Maybe a bike. <laughs> I assume it's a bike job. <laughs> That's what I thought. Okay, we're going to take one quick break, and when we come back, we're going to have the conclusion of the Maxis slope style in memory of Magaza. Can Emil Johansson take the triple crown? That is the big question. Prepare your bike. Visualize the track. Keep your blood pumping. Don't come around here feeling weak. Like a record on rotation, I'll leave you hit. Can't incriminate myself, so let me plead the fifth. I ain't saying where I'm going, like I ain't got a rip. Passport stamped up, it's just like the travel. Wanna see you on the board and big apple. That's on feeling the nights and street chapel. So we don't give up. Every mistake is a new opportunity. Forgive yourself for not being perfect and be awesome. Keep your grip loose for the wildest rides. Brandon Semina, Kai Kobe, and the only Johansson has won. Yes, the Bike Channel on Red Bull TV. It was like, sweet, I've done a competition, I'm back. 
but then life kicks you in the butt again and says, not yet. After being diagnosed with two autoimmune diseases, Emil Johansson is fighting to stay ahead of his illness. Every stress situation is triggering this virus. I'm just trying to look forward and hope it stays on the stable side. Emil, every mystery I've lived, the next chapter, now available on Red Bull TV. See the Skyline Gondola making his way up the bike park here in Rotorua. He's just joining us. This is the Maxi Slope style in memory of Magaza. We have had the first runs, and as has become customary over the course of the last five events, Emil Johansson is leading. He's three points ahead of Nikolai Rogatkin, and you might just have seen there a glimpse of the Elevate Trail crew pulling the polythene over the final takeoff on the Maxis jump. There's a tiny bit of liquid sunshine coming down, and it's threatening to derail things. Looking out to the west, though, it doesn't look like it's going to stick around too long. So, uh, Connor, let's take a look at Emil Johansson's first run. This was magical, wasn't it? He opened so crisp on this opener. Yep, so free bar web showing us, you know, he's got those, those combos, backing it up again. And just making stuff look so smooth. And one of the things I don't think, I haven't watched Emil ride in the flesh for a couple of years, and one of the things that I notice again watching him is his pop. And it doesn't show quite as much on the TV, but he gets so much height out of every jump. Yeah, which I only imagine just gives him more airtime to do the tricks he needs to do, so. It's, I'll tell you what else has happened. I remember I saw him in uh, Nuremberg in 2018, and he was quite, he was tall, he was that big, but he was quite willowy as well. He's filled out now, he's got some big shoulders on him and he's got a good bit of strength there. Yeah, I mean, you need to have that strength. You look at riders, you know, like Tim Beringer, he is a massive guy and he can just really muscle that bike around, so it definitely pays to have that strength. I was interested in him, I watched him riding and he's got that lovely fluid style to him, but exactly as you say, when he needs to, he can muscle that bike around. Yeah, yeah. And so I guess this is just, you know, it's him coming of age, you know, he's getting older and he's getting more dialed and he's, you know, working on those tricks and working on his body to do what he needs to do on his bike and it's all just coming together for him. Okay, we can see Max Fredrickson here. We talked about it. He was one of the riders who really wasn't happy in practice. He'd struggled getting to grips with the course. He hadn't found runs he wanted. Uh, he used a couple of expletive laden descriptions of the run, but then suddenly he pulls this out. Yep, massive combos all the way down. Which we have held like super fast, wrapping those bars and they're getting the hands off. 200 years ago, he would have been a gunslinger with hands that quick. I wouldn't want to be against him. And free, Phenomenally quick. Perfect free bar to finish it off. And a big, big smile. And Rotorua holds a special place in his heart because this was the first place that he rode at Crankworks. But yeah, he struggled all week. Good to see him overcoming that one. You see Emil there, his fellow Swede, really, really relaxed. And we, we heard Emil at the start of the show talking about pressure, and he it feels like he's got a handle on this, doesn't it? it he, I know that Brett Reader almost psyched himself out of the Triple Crown in 2017, and I think that's been on a lot of people's minds ever since. Yeah, so Emil seems to handle it very well, as do a lot of the other riders, but some riders, you can crack under it. And I feel if you can not put too much pressure on yourself, Obviously, you're going to have pressure, but not to put too much on it that it makes you crack and what, is the key. And very often, you look at it and you've got, you see the different personalities and the way they oh, deal with pressure. So you've got Nikolai Rogatkin, who's like a bull in a china shop. He, he meets fire with fire. He'll just charge at it. And I mean, you see that energy in his first run. This, for me, this one was so, so impressive. Yeah, so starting it off huge with that perfect cork seven there. And then Moto inspired, love, love just seeing something different out there. And into the rotations, back to back cash rolls, 3x off the drop. And 
because that would have to be the biggest combo we saw on that long run there. Definitely, and I love watching the arc of the bike on the takeoff of the Twister. He needs to use the entire width of that ramp. Yeah, and it almost looks like he's 180 before he's even off the lip they carved so early. I've slowed a couple of those down, and he's pretty much perpendicular as he takes off. He's let that shoulder dip as he goes, and he's, he's flying head first off the ramp. Yeah. And so you can see why it's so important for these boys to have these takeoffs tapped, because if we can get this going again, he can't be spinning like that off a wet ramp. He'll just be sliding out. Yeah, well, the Elevate boys are dragging the tarpaulins all over the course. Got a little bit of rain coming down now, no doubt. They've been hosing down these landings, so it's definitely going to soak up. They're not going to be too worried about the landings themselves. They're not going to get bogged. And these are very, very short showers. If you were watching yesterday during dual slalom, you would have seen the absolute mayhem and entertainment that was provided by these downpours as the track got slicker and slicker. But today, I can see we're actually in sunshine right now. It's the classic crowded house, four seasons in one day trope that you hear about New Zealand. The weather changes so quickly here. And uh, that's certainly the case. We've got a rainbow somewhere because you've got bright sunshine and rain at the moment coming down on the course. But like you say, this last landing here, it's pretty dry looking, so I will be able to soak up a bit of moisture. Yeah, it's definitely not going to hurt it. Yeah. We can take a look now at uh, uh, a little graphic that's going to show us Nikolai going up against Emil and their statistics throughout their careers. It's pretty impressive watching these two. And I think from Nikolai, well, this is the difference between the runs, I apologise, but this is the cash roll with the X up, and we talked about this. He, he had the back-to-back -back cash rolls. Interesting trick choice. Yeah, I mean, you know, the two cash rolls, they are different because of the different combo, but effectively, you know, they are the same rotation. So. Maybe in a second run, we'll be able to see him mix that up. You know, we know he's got plenty more big tricks in there. He's got triple whips, you know. What's interesting, we haven't seen, I mean, Emil's leaning heavily on his opposite repertoire as well, which I think the judges love. Yep. It shows that versatility. Whereas you've got those big show tricks from Nikolai. He hasn't gone down that super technical oppo route. So if he's got something oppo in his bag that he can throw out, might be the moment. Yeah. I mean, he is, you know, he's placed with strength, doesn't he? He knows he can do those big spins. And so that's, I guess, you know, what he's going for. But you never know. Sometimes these boys keep stuff secret and we don't know, you know, what they're going to throw out. I love that seven off the opening drop because trying to measure that rotation when you've got a really short distance up to the apex, but then a really long drop down. I find that really impressive. Yeah, yeah, big drop down up there. But like we were saying earlier, like, the sports has progressed so much that what would have been, you know, a trick on a final jump is now getting pushed up towards those start features. And that's what's scoring high doing a big trick at the top of the course. It scores hugely. Lovely little down can three. I love I love the air awareness there. He would have felt like he's over rotating, so we'll just put his put his foot out the back there. That slows you down a little bit. And then into his huge ender. It, it all looks like it's second nature to Emil now, doesn't it? It really looks that effortless. But you can see how stoked he is to put that run down there. Release of emotion. Right, we can go down to the finish area now where we've got the headphones on. Nikolai Rigatkin. Now, Nikolai, phenomenal first runs there. And congratulations on yours. What did that mean to you? Oh, that run felt incredible. We've really struggled out here with practice all week. Basically, not even riding at all. We got a little two-hour session yesterday and basically... Uh, a bit of a warm-up practice before today's contest, so it felt unbelievable to put that run together. Got really, really sketchy in the middle. My foot like got stuck under my bike during that cash roll seat grab on the hip, and I thought it was all over. Had to adjust them, some things on the features after because it uh, felt really hectic in there, but uh, rolling through this finished corral is a feeling that I felt so many times over the course of my career, luckily. So doing it again today felt unreal, so I'm stoked. Nice. Um, going back to um, getting your foot slightly stuck on that cash roll there, we did notice that. Do you think you're going to mix it up for the next run? We did see a few different combos going down in practice, so uh, we know that we know you got more in the tank. Oh, yeah. Um, if we get to do this second run, which I really hope we will, I really got to step it up. I'm rooting for Emil to win the Triple Crown, but obviously I want to do everything in my power to stop him. We're also fighting for the overall points for the Slope Style World Championship, so that run was one that I really, really meant a lot to me to get. For, for the World Championship overall, but to beat Emil, I'm gonna really have to do the run of doom. And I have something planned, and uh, <laughs> let's just see how it goes. I hope the, the conditions hold up and I'm able to 
to go for it because that would be a lot of fun. And uh, I know even if I pull it, Emil's got way more in the tank. So it would be a fun battle to have at the end. But uh, I'm going to drop in and see what I can do. Wish me luck, boys. <laughs> I will wish you luck. I'm looking forward to seeing the run of Doom as well. It sounded like you just invented that title for it then. But one quick question. What is it about the celebration? Where did the home run come from? Oh, with the celebrations, it's always uh, just means so much to me. Like when I finish a run, so the celly is pure emotions. I always have a few different cellies milling around in my brain. Uh, and after completing that run, just felt like the baseball swing celly had to happen. I honestly should have done more of a downwards cricket swing as we're down here in New Zealand. But since I'm a big Boston Red Sox fan and my boys unfortunately Lost right before going into the World Series this year. I just did a little baseball swing, but I was so hyped. And having the boys come over and hug me after, that's like the best feeling. So good vibes with our whole crew of riders. And uh, everyone's actually, I mean, not everyone, but everyone's just on it with the riding today and pulling some crazy runs. And it's amazing to see. Okay, thank you so much, Nikolai. We're going to look forward to seeing the run of doom later. <laughs> yes, me too. <laughs> awesome. I mean, he was spectacular but we said it in the broadcast he was magnanimous as well he celebrated everyone else's successes yeah he's just stoked on seeing all the boys do what he knows you know they can do and i mean to me that just you know there's nothing better than being stoked when your peers are doing you know the best they can and if they beat him he's still stoked so i love i love it well, and he's got, you've got to say he's had a lot of longevity through his career. He's, he's nowhere near as young as Emil anymore, but he's putting the pressure on him. Just three points adrift. Yeah, I know. And so, like, like you're saying, he's had a long career. He started off in BMX, and now he's a mountain bike, and he's brought some of those BMX tricks over, which has really, you know, pushed the sport forward. And, you know, now with him and Emil, you know, really battling away and the other boys nipping at the heels, it's just pushing the sport forward, which is awesome to see. Well, you mentioned riders nipping at people's heels. Griffin Paulson's one of the riders. We, we showed you his run from Silver Star, the slope style in British Columbia, just before his run. But Griffin Paulson, has, it feels like he's building momentum now, and he's ready to really start blasting his way off the yeah. podium. So, I mean, that's a huge, you know, huge starting track. Front flip on step down is no joke. It's a real statement for the judges, yeah. isn't it? 100%. And we know he's got more. Well, he's got combos for that. We yeah, know he's exactly. got the tuck for that as well. Yeah. And so to see him be smart and just put down a super solid run, get to the bottom, and then the second run, he can really play with it. So he definitely... The backy there, I think it was only Tom Eisted. I think Emil Johansson, maybe. No, Emil had the oh, three. God, there's a few. Uh, Paul Coudier. Yeah. Yeah, and then the three double walk to finish. But you can see, look at Super Rogatkin. Clean. Rogatkin just celebrating pumped. that run almost as much as he celebrates his own. Yeah, just pumped on it. There we go. You could see how much that What's run it? meant to him. Yo. Very, very pleased with that one. Uh, we talked to him earlier, though, and sat him down to have a discussion with him about risk because it's something oh. that he's become more and more acquainted with. When you're doing these high-level runs, you're absolutely assessing all the risk that you're taking and the rewards as well. Um, so, like, that's a huge part of my riding and feeling like I'm I'm safe and like even when I'm pushing my limits and whatnot. But say there's certain moves you can do, like I'm hitting late bar spins and stuff. It's not necessarily going to be a huge crash, or hopefully not, if you do mess that up. But you know, it's also part of the sport to take those risks, and you just have to know when to do it, I guess. When you're taking those risks, you're hoping the judges are going to reward you and be stoked in your run. But I think for lots of us riders, it's more about like your own goals and your own like, fulfill like fulfilling those. Certainly the reactions of the riders suggest that. So confirmation of the standings after the first runs. Emil Johansson, 95.75. And Nikolai Rogatkin shouted at him as he ran towards him after his first run. Do you not do scores under 95 anymore? Nikolai Rogatkin on 92. Max Fredrickson rounds out the top three on 88. But Griffin Paulson, who you've just seen, is in fourth place. And Connor, you said it's very obvious that he's got combos to throw into that run that will push him into that 90-point range, potentially. Yeah, exactly. Seen his, uh, seen his movie early in this year. It's kind of when he busted on the scene for a lot of people and really you know, got people taking notice of who he was. And then to back that video up, 
in the BC Slope style. Everyone was really taking notice and he's backing it up again. Yeah, it's one thing to do it on film when you've got as many tries as you want, something else completely to do it in two runs at a competition. Yeah, exactly. And without the amount of, you know, the ideal amount of practice here, he's still throwing it down so you can tell he's a dull rider. Well, Eric Fedko was the one rogue name at the bottom of that list. He's in last place. Unfamiliar territory for the German. But look at these pictures. That squall has blown through. So the tarps are coming back off again. The blowers are out. They're patting down some of the landings. This course is going to be in pristine condition in less than three minutes. So stay with us. Uh, you, can, you might have time to go away and make a cup of tea, but leave us on so that as soon as it goes, you know that we are here and ready to bring you all of the action. Right now, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll have those second runs of the Maxis slope style in memory of Magaza. Nikolai Rogatkin chasing down Emil Johansson. I just want to live my life lavish, man. I want to be a I'm Matt Jones, I'm a professional freestyle mountain bike rider and I'm attempting three world's first tricks that have never been done on a mountain bike. And I'm tackling this project with my twin brother Jono. It's going to be a journey. No points at all for that. Are you going to hit me if I stand here? No. Matt Jones, Design and Conquer, now available on Red Bull TV. Four generations of mountain bike athletes. Two weeks in the middle of nowhere. This is the coolest place I've ever been. A foreboding place for people if they're not prepared. The challenge of their lifetime. To me, that was by far the sickest big mountain line I've ever done. Riding the Tachinchini. That was scary. Woo! Now available on Red Bull TV. Two freestyle world champs turn their backs on the racetracks. Martin Söderström and Emil Johansson. It's just cool to be riding. Team up to let the good times roll and the good vibes flow. Ride with the Swedes. Now available on Red Bull TV. Welcome back to Rotorua in New Zealand for the third and final stop of the Crankworks World Tour. We are at the Maxis Slope Style in memory of Magaza, and we have had a first run to take your breath away. A little bout of rain in between. It came just in the middle of the interval, but the blowers are out, the tarps are off, and the rain has stopped. And this man is going to be dropping in first. We're going in reverse order of standings after run one. So this is what the start order looks like. Eric Fedko, second place after his best performance in British Columbia. And he finds himself in 13th place after run one. And then the other riders that fell, Timothy Branger, uh, Thomas Lemoyne, Tom Eisted with a blowout on his last jump there. And then all of those riders, the first three after them, Bernd Winkler, Marcel Hunt and Lucas Schaefer, Crankworks, rookies, but all put down very respectable runs, Connor. Yep, I mean, first time here, can't really complain with getting to the bottom and being in one piece and just having a solid run. Uh, Emilio Hansen will have the luxury of dropping last, and he is in line for the triple crown of slope style. All three events in 2021. Can he take the clean sweep? He's already done Innsbruck and British Columbia. Rotorua is the last of them. You can see we've got the blowers out on the start ramp here. Last bit of moisture just in the compression there, right where you don't want it, actually, isn't it? Just before the takeoff. Yeah, especially with the rotations going on off lips. You don't want to be sliding out there. Paul Coudeur, a fantastic run from the Frenchman, but uh, we felt maybe slightly underscored. I think the judges saw something that maybe I missed. Yeah, I think there was just like, you know, just not quite dialed in there, you know, just a few little, you know, foot bubbles that could uh, could tidy up. He had the, the flip whip off the start and then just, you know, really had to crank to get for that next one. And like he didn't slip a foot, but just didn't quite, you know, land it perfectly. So a few things like that to tidy up. Wasn't as por polished as he wanted, but Eric Fedko is going to drop him first. So let's take a recap of his first run. And it was going beautifully up top. Yep, so three whips to start off with and then super stylish. 360 there. Beautiful. Into his signature. Yeah, one of those motocross 
Free bar work. That little, was where the issue came. Little bubble. Start there, bar down. And then this, the free down work just didn't quite get the catch like he wanted. Didn't have the speed to get off without a big hop. And then I feel if we had seen him try and do this long and low, we would have just seen the same as Lemoyne. So smart move to pull out. And we said it at the time, and I'll say it again now, it, I don't think he's had as much time on the bottom jumps as everyone else has. Yeah, I definitely feel I saw him quite a bit practicing up top. Uh, if you're the, I think the three bar whip, I saw him uh, lining up a few times and didn't see him down here as much as the others. So looking forward to see what he you know, ends up doing down here when he gets down. Uh, it looked like he was visualizing a cash roll then. He's throwing himself shoulder first through the start gate. You see just oh. the top. Oh, look at this. Beautifully shaped dirt. The Elevate crew really, really going into detail here. Yeah, we're pretty spoiled with the dirt on this course. Very pumicey, lots of, you know, volcanic area. It's Night. fertile, isn't it? Yeah, very easy to work with as well. Max Fredrickson dishing out the autographs. There are only a couple of fans here. They're people directly related to anyone who's competing, who's come in. So those kids, I've seen them around. They've been wrestling bare-chested most yeah. of the day. <laughs> They're very entertaining. Yeah. Taking uh, each other to pieces. But the sun is now out, the temperature is rising, so this course is going to open up very, very quickly. Nikolai Rogatkin. Vlad Rogatkin the other day gave us our quote of the day, Nikolai's dad. He said, There is no good try. It only is only win or lose. I imagine that that's there you go. That motivational quotes to live by. There's no good try here. There is a winner and there is a loss. Imagine that phrase is echoing around in Nikolai's head right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's an impressive mullet he's sporting there as well. Yeah, it fit right in uh, down south in New Zealand, I feel. Good to see Ooh, Thomas Lemoyne okay. up and walking after that impact that he had casing the long and low jump. Yeah. And he looked in a lot of pain there, only a month off that arthroscopy surgery. Yeah, so didn't come off or anything, but yeah, just too soon after surgery to really handle a big impact like that. I think the body language says it all there. He kind of looks disappointed, a little bit unsure of whether he wants to ride on that or not. Just testing it, going leg to leg. Tom Eisted up there with him as well. Always a nervous time standing at the top there, waiting for the waiting for the call that you're dropping back in. He looked like he was getting through some nails, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, you got all, all your thoughts. What are you going to do? How can you do it right? Look at that, a seamless transition there. Eric Fedko going down, doing his gladiator, a bit of dust on the hands. Yeah. Feel the dirt on the day, which means I think now he's got his bike that we are in business. A couple of fives from Brazier and Kudel. Can we please clear the course now? So you can hear the marshals clearing the course out. Eric Fedko is in position. The young German, so, so mature in his riding despite only 23 years old. Caught flat in his first run in British Columbia, but then rode really, really well under pressure for his second run. So he's in the same position now. Can he have a repeat performance? He's got that triple bar spin and he's got, we saw the 360, uh, it's called the windshield wiper, but being British, I always feel the need to call it a windscreen wiper. <laughs> always seems to handle the pressure very well as well. And you know, we know he's got all the big tricks and he's super stylish, so. You, you talk to any uh, sports psychologist who specializes in subjective sports, whether it's snowboarding, skateboarding, freestyle mountain biking, a judged sport, and they'll tell you you can only control the controllables. And that's, I feel like that's the philosophy that Eric Fedko's got. It's like, I can only control what my riding. And that's all I'm going to worry about. So he knows how far he wants to push himself. He knows what he wants to do. Yeah, no point worrying about what other people are doing. You just play to your strengths and you score what you score. So seamless join there between the dirt and the kicker. That is a work of art, fella. Take a bow on that one. So Eric Fedko. Just drying his hands a little bit there, making sure he's ready on those bars. Look at that. Little bar practice. He's been wiping his hands on the floorboards and now his tires. He wants to keep them dry, doesn't he? 
Obviously got sweaty palms there. Big, big score for first, but it is not beyond him. He logged a 92 and change in British Columbia. So stretching out the shoulder, stretching out the neck. A lot of these riders had a bit of trouble just warming up after that two weeks in managed isolation quarantine that the New Zealand government demands. He's now been told that he can go, and he's dropping in. The same side here, big three whip start off with. Big three, not quite as stylish as before. And the three super seat in the, the signature. Three bar whip, landing way cleaner than the first one. Up there, we nolly three up, bar down. Bar to T-Rog down, actually. You've got to get this speed three right here. Up. And truck, truck to X down. Three to the big backy on the long and low. Oh, and to the three wood finish, we know he wanted more there. Very difficult to call that one because yeah. you picked it out straight away. Potentially the brake had just told on him a little bit. He didn't have the momentum there, and the body language says everything. It was good, but it wasn't great. Yeah, I mean, we know a lot of people would be absolutely pumped on that run. 100%. But for himself, he would know he's got more fun. He's got to stoke to get to the bottom. So starting off there, three work. All of the elements are there, but as you said, it's just that little bit of polish, the style yeah. on a couple of those tricks. Yeah. No lack of style on this one, though. The Fedco signature, Indian seat grab three. And in this, he landed this cleaner than in his first run. Three bar to work, no bother at all. So composed. The other so, angle. So that's one of the tricks I uh, saw him trying a bit of practice, working up to it. And then the free whip there, you can see he just wants, by the look of it, throw the bars there. So, you know, just missing that combo, but got to be stoked. You got down, put a solid run in. It, it felt like he took his foot ever so slightly off the gas on those last two jumps, just a straight back here and then the three flip. The three whip, sorry. Yeah, I mean, he'd be, you know, I guess would be playing in his mind. He got past that point where he didn't get past last time, and he just—he's probably at the point where he just wants to get to the finish, and you know, and get wants a solid to score run. on the board. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he knows. He, we know that he's got that windshield wiper if he's really pushing. So I he mean, would have expected to see that. That's still a super solid run. Yeah, you—you yeah. you called it right at the start there. You need to give him credit. It's an incredible yeah. run. Yeah. But that's the the level that Fedco's operating at on a daily basis. So. Yeah. In the, as commentators, we're allowed to compare him to his yeah. to his best runs. Yeah. The so judges yeah, won't. Changing the 360 down down with, to a 360 toboggan just to you know clean that up. And then the three bar to X. Perfect speed there. Caught that landing magically, which is so important coming into that long and low. Over 11 meter gap there. Yep. So yeah. So we did see a few people first run struggling with that one. So a 76. It's one of the scores the judges use to put people slap bang in the middle. 75 is almost that range finder for a landed run. Yeah. And a little bit of resignation there from Ed and Eric Fedko. <laughs> yeah. By yeah, smiling. You hear him say, I'm happy I'm alive, so <laughs> he's in good spirits. Yeah, definitely. I think if Tom Eisted is at the sort of strong, stale, uh, strong end of the scale for minerals and really wanting to risk it on a course. Eric likes it really solid, really safe. Yeah, you got it. Now, Timothy Branger of France. Rubiche is his rapping name. Lost the peak in a crash in, I think it was pump track. He went speed over and the style. Oh, speed and style. Yeah. Big, big tricks here though for the Frenchman. It's coming in. The quad truck again. There's a huge combo to starting off with. Into the flip bar. And see if he can get this extension here. Flip, double flip tuck with massive extension. Over rotating almost. Double whip, wrap it, wrapping it around. Oppo whip up, bar down. Double bar up. This is where it went wrong. Whip down, beautiful. Put in a crank just in case. Big back on the long low. Flip double, perfect to pedals, beautiful. And Regatkin's oh, out to celebrate yeah. straight away. He's stoked. Both <laughs> hands in the air, 
Big look at him <laughs> rubbing down the peak. Brothers without the peaks. Yeah. <laughs> the cannibal right, twins. Bro, yeah. <laughs> Brownshire with a fantastic performance there. So I imagine coming back on that tail whip drop there, that's a big, big track on a drop like that, and the only guy doing it, so that's got to score well. And this as well, the 360 quad truck. How they managed to fit that in, I don't know. He's working it really hard yeah. with his hands as well, isn't he? And the flip bar there. We haven't seen massive combos on that jump, and then the extension on that. Full commitment. Full, full commitment. No half measures, no hesitation from Timothy Fangier. Wrapping out the double. So he was telling me earlier in the week that he's riding a medium common style frame there. For such a big guy, that must make that frame easy to, a lot easier to throw around. Well, he comes from that BMX background, and as you said, I mean, he's got Hulk written on his helmet yeah. for a reason. The man's an absolute beast. Yeah. And Catching. while he has got that finesse and that beautiful touch on the bike, if he needs to, he really can muscle it. Yeah. Catching that whip super early there, and you can see him just moving his foot around. It's a big backy. It'd be interesting to see because... Flipped up. I mean, the back here, we saw the lawn dart is yeah. one of the more tech tricks that we've seen over that long and low. Yeah, saw so again can do the, the funny tuck. Yeah. But it's the back, the straight back, he feels like it might be a tiny bit light. Mm. It gives the judges an excuse. Yeah, almost just a sit up. But he's but, uh, pumped. Got to the bottom safe, got an awesome run in there. The adrenaline <laughs> coursing through both Regatkin and Brownshire. Nikolai's stoked on the no, the no peak. Yeah, he's got a mate. <laughs> so, the judges, big, big call this one, I think. Right now, it's an 88 to get on the podium. Max Fredrickson is in third place. Some big, big showcase tricks in there. Big crowd pleasers, that yeah. tuck, no hand, uh, double backflip. And I feel the 360 quad truck on the first jump, so like the higher up the course they're doing big tricks, that's got to score high, surely. Yeah, it's a huge risk on that yeah. first drop. And the impact, I mean, uh, if you're on a, a standard jump, then there's a little bit of a step up to it, and the landing will catch you if something goes wrong. Yeah. When you're dropping out of the sky, the impact, especially when you've let go of the bars four times, yeah. that's a really, really intimidating yeah, trick. That's a risky one. Is that in Petit Beyond? How's your French? A little, uh, mediocre. So there you have it, Fredrickson on ADA. I don't think that's a 95. No. But it could be mid 80s. Be interesting to see where this comes in. Could be, yeah, could be bumping. Oh, and a second. Oh, what a run! Oh. He's pushed Nikolai Regakin into third, and he's only two and a half points off him in Johansson. Phenomenal ride from so Timothy Brogia. Well, that's those huge tricks and the extension coming through there. And, and, and you perfect. called it. It's the risk at the top of the course. Quad bar coming out yeah. of the gate. That Judge is, is absolutely loving yeah. that one. And the tail whip drop in, no one else doing this. Huge drop to be doing it on. Massive risk. Yeah. So and Timothy Brownshire, second place. Looking. He's got a long, long wait to see if he can hold on to that podium though. But coming after Eric Fedko, that is one of the big, big threats gone. Yeah, and we know Thomas Lavoy next as well, another podium threat, so. Oh, I on any normal day, I would agree with you 100%, but the way we saw him gingerly testing out yep. that knee, yep. I, I'm not 100% sure that we're going to see that from him. Might just go for a solid run down. And... Oh, he's in the gate. Oh, it, and that's good to see. I've got to say, if he's in the gate, you don't write Thomas Lemoyne yep. off. He is so focused. I mean, you look at his outfit, you look at him rapping and you may think that he's all about the fun, but when you put this man on a bike, he's the consummate competitor. Yeah. Starting off three unturned down. Big free tuck. Cranking in. Flip tuck to bar, getting those combos in. It's almost a relief to free see him crank. Bar. It means that that knee is working. Yeah. Gapping the whole thing, big tuck on it, same as I did. Front of you, can you get, yes. 
He's carrying his speed, three down. This is a huge one. Huge three. And a cash finish up, nice. Just back where landing, but riding out beautifully. Absolutely incredible run from Thomas Lemoyne, considering how he finished his first run. You can see that right leg wouldn't actually bend. He was able to squat on the left leg. He kind of bent it out. To come back from a crash, come back from knee surgery, you've got to be stuck. And to put a solid run like that down. Absolutely yeah. phenomenal. Yeah. Oh, chapeau, Thomas Lemoyne. Chapeau. It's a three unturned down to start it off. I would be interested to know if his knee affects him doing some tricks, so he's got to leave some out of his out of his run. Well, you said Tom Hay said six, six, seven years on this course, that landing at the start gate starting to feel just a touch flat. Yeah. And I watched his right leg very carefully, and it, it actually cranked it down just slightly. It's a three double bar there. We know this guy's got lots of combos as well. And that then, is beautiful. Yeah, gap in that whole thing. That video doesn't do it justice either. That gap is massive. And coming back from the bobble on the front foot, not quite having the speed, landed it better. And it's Just a huge risk, that gap, because the alternative to not making it is casing the wood yep. and then going teeth first into the landing. Yeah. Beautiful cash roll. Signature style on that cash roll there. Slide back with landing, but riding out beautifully. No, that was a manual. He meant that. Combos. Yeah. Judges take note. Landing in a manual. Okay, so 92 is now the spot for third. There's a smile on Thomas Lemoyne's face. He's just giving it a metal hide. He's not happy with this. I think he's. I think there's a little bit of concern over his knee there that he might have undone some of the good work the surgeons had done a month ago. Would be a little worried in his knee, know. but he's subdued. Just shows how tough these guys are. Getting back in the start gate. You know, month had a surgery, sore knee. Nikolai Rogatkin. He's, he's like a caged lion, isn't he? He just paces this area waiting for his run. Yeah. So Thomas Lemoyne, very, very patient. 85.25 fifth place solid. for the French Open. In, incredible run considering how he left the course yeah. after his first yeah, run. What he's coming back from. And I feel if he was if he was in one like you know if he had his knee rehab perfectly, I feel he'd definitely got more in the tank than that as well. Then a, a big big jump though, score wise, yep. to go from where he was up into the podium. Tom Eisted up next. We've got riding, riding that blanked out frame there on the hunt next year for someone. Yeah, he's looking for a sponsor. Space. Big explosion. Massive detonation there. Uh, little hands in the air, but I said one of the riders who could really take this course to town. Yeah, yeah he's riding for a new sponsor, essentially, isn't he? This is his audition. Uh, yeah, I'm sure he's not going to say no. Adrenaline Quarry uh, sticker on his top there. That's where he's got his airbag, so maybe we'll have to go back there and work on that 1080 a little bit more. Dial it in, although I'm sure we'll see it stick it in his second run like he did in practice. Yeah, I was going to say, I want to see it now. I'm not waiting. So, a kid from Cornwall, he's no longer a kid. I mean, all of his career, he's had that reputation as a sender. I've seen him guinea-pigging a lot of jumps. Yep. When you turn up to comps and there's new jumps, he just, uh, same as Nikolai Rogatkin, he doesn't have a differentiation between fun and fear, seemingly. Yeah, he's very on-off as well. He's like, he's cruising or he's sending on his bike. Well, Audi 9's this year, he spent, what, probably 10 tries trying to land a triple backflip in the airbag. Yeah, and then he was struggling to, to land the 1080 on the airbag, landed it once, and then he's like, take away the airbag, boom, landed it perfect. And then I think he also stuffed a uh, never been done in there, didn't he? he? Got the double barrel roll? I think that was last year. He, yeah. Was it? Yeah. yeah. Year before. A barrel roll drop. Yeah, I've seen, uh, I won't spill the beans, but I've seen some, um, seen a clip of him doing a pretty wild trick off a drop. Not quite dialed enough to take it to Derek yet, but. He's saving that one up. Yeah, hopefully he can work on that and uh, bring it out someday. So, <laughs> Timothy Brownshire already celebrating that incredible run. Second place at the moment for the Frenchman. And justified, I think, in celebrating that run. The way he finished the first run, sort of on his belly, on his seat, off the drop. He would have been forgiven for thinking that 
The podium was a stretch, but he's pulled that one out of the bag. We've got a tiny little bit of rain yeah, yeah. just creeping onto the course. So Tom on hold just for a second, but it's bright all around us. Certainly no gray clouds too close. So I think this is a very, very temporary hold at the moment. Yeah. You look at him, he looks like he's kind of sat waiting for a prescription not to drop into <laughs> an enormous, well, one of the world's biggest slope style courses. Yeah, well, I mean, one of the older boys in the field here, you know, it's not his first rodeo, so time. Time he's set up at the top of plenty time of events in his life. Older and older. There we go, so he's getting cold, been a while since his first run. Yeah, that's one of the big battles. Now, I actually felt for Eric Fedko, I think that was one of the big things that he came unstuck with, just that big break between trying to build adrenaline, get yourself peaking at the right moment for the run, and then you just suddenly find yourself sat there waiting. Yeah. I mean, you've, you've seen this, you've been at Rampage, the ultimate hold event. Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, where wind's a huge issue. Thankfully here, the wind's not really an issue at the moment, that side down, we're just battling a tiny bit of moisture, but doesn't look like too much, bit of blue sky around, so. We just don't want to have that moisture on, on a lip when, you know, someone like Tom's, you know, going to try another 1080. You can't be, when they're carving so hard off that lip, you can't be slipping out. And tell, tell me about it. This course, obviously, it's one of the world's biggest slope style courses. Can anyone come and ride it during the week? No. <laughs> I've, I've been, I'd love if you could, but no. Nah, so they put uh, put the ramps up on blocks to stop them rotting and, um, yeah, tarp a bit of it up. And Tommy Hay and the Elevate boys come here each year and fluff it up and... Sometimes change a few things. But Rotorua on the whole, I mean, if you're into trail riding, this is not just one of New Zealand's finest areas, it's one of the world's finest yeah, areas. this is the it? place to be. I mean, look at that. I, every time I go in there, I just get lost. So many good tracks to choose from. And they've got this new car park down on the southeast corner that gives you access to the beautiful native forest and the summit. If you look at the uh, contours there, the summit of the whole park is right down there. So rather than track through the whole park to get to the summit, kind of cheat up the back there, can't you? Yeah, and there's a rumour going around it could be a gondola going in sometime. Oh. How good would that be? <laughs> well, let's check out that new car park. That sounds punishing, doesn't it? But this is actually quite exciting. Really? So the Teputake Otawa car park has been in development with Tuhaurangi and Council for the last year. Tuhaurangi wants the people to prepare themselves and be able to take their best step into the industry, as well as developing mountain biking opportunities for more people like Tuhoto. The big opportunity we have in developing this car park and this new step into the industry is pretty much enabling our people to ride, letting them know that they own these tracks, letting them know that they can ride these tracks, and giving them the best platform to be able to take it as far as they can. We're innovators by nature, so who knows what can happen at the car park? From live concerts to pods in the forest to gondolas going up to the tracks. So there's five art pieces all up. All of these different mediums, but portraying ancestors that lived in the area. We also think that there's uh, capability in storytelling and app development, so that stories can be heard uh, that are native to the track. We just want to develop the car park so that it becomes the hot spot for mountain biking. We want to have the best opportunity to provide an experience that's like no other and ultimately create a platform for our EV to be the best riders that they can be. So Rotorua as a place and the confederated tribes and the, the mana whenua of this area, the local people have all got behind mountain biking over the last 15 years. And the result is that you're seeing mountain bike specific developments. I mean, the, the terrain around here is incredible. But right now, Tom Eisted is putting the helmet back on, which means it's time to get down to business. That's spelled B I D N I double S, Connor, in case you were wondering. The blowers are out on these ramps. Tom Eisted, no doubt, warming up on the grips. Do you know who that is in the uh, purple t shirt? Uh, he was crafting that perfect join between the third jump. Yep, the Elevate boys. Uh, that's Jai and, if I can get a good look there, um, Craig. Boy's been working for Tom for a while there, and uh, yeah, no, no stranger to crafting beautiful tracks and courses. Okay, look at that. Nikolai Rogatkin's name on the Triple Crown from 2018. 
At the moment, Emil Ro Johansson has one hand on that trophy. But Rogatkin is yet to drop. And he said, we, we heard him in the interview at halftime. He said, I don't want to ruin Emil's party, but I'm also not going to back down. Yep. And he wanted, what was his run he wanted to do? Mega run. No. The run of doom. The run of doom, that's that. I mean, the mega run would have been slightly <laughs> less Run of macabre. doom, way better. Yeah, the run of doom sounds yeah. like it's going to go wrong to me. You know he's going to pull out all the stops, though. So, Slugstyle World Championship leaderboard, you get a thousand points for first, and there's been two events, so I think that tells you, you only need a rudimentary grasp of maths to know that Emil Johansson has won two events. Eric Fedko just behind him. Nikolai Rigatkin, a thousand points from this. I think Emil Johansson is guaranteed second, though, you'd have to say, which maybe not. Well, I mean, you know, it all depends if all of a sudden everyone pushed him out. I don't think it's likely, but... There's not an awful lot of room left above him. There's not, no. What's he got? 95.75, I think? Yeah. So Tom I said, just looking over his shoulder, that's the view out of the start gate. With that hands in his pockets, looking pretty relaxed. <laughs> it is a beautiful start gate. It looks a little like a Mirai. Yeah, lots of, lots of uh, cultural carvings on it all the way down the course actually really just showing you know what Rotorua is yeah the cultural heartland of New Zealand so Tom just waiting he's got the GoPro on goggles go on Cornwall's finest he's got a 52.25 but that's with a blown tyre if he can lace this run together, then expect to see a very respectable score replace that 52. Yeah, buddy. Drop it. Look tuck on the step down. Big three on the long and low. I know he wanted more, but oh, going for the super flip. Didn't quite get that extension there. Just cruising his way down. Oh, he doesn't Shame. want to risk it. Yeah. Oh, such a shame. He had such good practice runs. Yep. One of the first riders to really get his teeth into this course. Big old barrel there. And just cruising. Oh. He'll be disappointed with that. I know it a lot more. Oh, chucking buckets of dirt over the banners there. Ghosts his bike. I don't think... Do you think it was maybe a little slip in some dirt there, or do you think he made a mistake that made him pull out? I think that super flip, really, you know, as soon as you miss the track, which a super flip for him is one of his, you know, easy tracks, and he just miss, miss it up, and then, like, he knows he's not going to get the score that he wants, so he kind of... Got that from big there. Big tuck backy to yep. kick off, and it was perfect. Beautiful extension there. 360. And then just didn't quite get. Yeah, so it just ended up being a flip, no footer really. Normally gets a huge extension on those super flips, but today just wasn't his day. Yeah, it's one of his signatures, isn't it? Yeah. And if you look at FMX, they actually have flip levers yeah. that they flick up to be able to perform that trick. You've got to have a really solid handle on your grips. Yeah. You've got to have super glue on your fingers to be able to pull that bike back in on a and so bike. A lot of the boys, when they do it, they put a lot of pressure on their brake to help bring that in as well, with not having the flip levers. There we go, there we go. I was looking for the camera there. Tom I said 34 for that second run. Disappointment for him after such high hopes. Next rider in. Bernd Winkler out of Austria, hometown of Hartburg. It's his debut at Crankworx. He came so close at Joyride in 2018, but broke his back falling off the whale tail. But he's fought his way back to this level when, at a time when everyone's progressing so quickly, when you have to take a year out, it, it's kind of magnified, ma uh, multiplies that, that progression rate. So, double up to get back. What's he got second run? Three double bar, step down. And a big flip tuck, huge extension. Flip work. Oh, I feel he wanted something else after that. And to just sliding out there. A little bit of a case, just throwing him off there. Lucas Hooper and Lucas Schaefer all watching that one go down. Boys are always bummed when one of the competitors go down, but you're always stoked when, you know, 
they can ride away from it yeah. in one piece. One of the most creative riders. You and I had kind of asked the question whether as that kind of Audi 9s rider, great session rider, great film rider, he's got those incredible manual combos, whether or not he could translate those skills. Yeah, it looks like we're going to see him pedal from the top of this landing here and try to do the end of the course, keep the, the minuscule crowd happy. Yeah. All the riders and their uh, support staff. The COVID safe crowd. Yeah. But doing it, for, doing it for everyone out there watching online. So. Good that he was in a spot where he can just reset and continue on down. I was going to say that's the only part of the course where you could yeah. do that. Yeah, it's just chilling off the top there. Big tart. Oh, oh. oh. Big Sufla casing, he's all right though. But Vinkla giving us all a shock down here. A little bit sore looking, but. I was going to say, he's throwing shade on Tom Eisted with yeah. the, super, the Superman flip. Yeah. So that was opposite. Oh, so he did end up catching it perfectly, but just the case threw him off. Yeah. But that would have been a good scoring trick. It's one of the opposite three women there. It's one of the things you're risking, isn't it? In when you go for an opposite trick, you can't get the same pop. Yeah. You don't have the same confidence rotating in that direction. Yeah. So, Bernd Winkler from Austria taking two crashes in one run. Pretty impressive. Doing it for the crowd. They've got to love when they do it for the crowd. Yeah, exactly. Wasn't taking no for, for an answer there. Marcel Hunt, 31 years old, making his debut at Crankworks. Love that. Bit of romance out here. It's a flip bar starting off. Almost looks like he's cruising, but he carries such a good massive free table on that jump. One of his signatures. And a flip double bar, nice. Double bar on the step up, pedaling hard. Now he threw the Truck seven well. there last time. Yeah. So oh, we know yeah. he's cut back a little bit here. Suicide. I'm turned in up. What has he got down? Big for you. Steezy dipping it in. Yeah, he put his nose down, didn't he? Tuck over the line, by cranking it. Then wrapping that cork step. Oh, how did he wow. hold on to that? He had Muscled no it business we were, holding on to that. We were talking that, about that before. He's Big strong guy, a lot of time on, a lot of time roofing, probably keeping him fit and strong. Hundred, well, you can see the size of his back. He's an absolute monster. He was wearing a gold top in the first run. <laughs> Tom Eisted must be pretty strong just to pick him up. Uh, yeah. It almost just looks like relief well, on that run. And uh, I mean, that's that's a big, big moment for Marcel yeah. Hunt. To have stopped riding in 2013, he'd lost his love of the sport. Yeah, and then to come back like this, flip double bar on the big big step up there. After that 360 table on a jump like that as well, that should score well. Really, really clean riding. Yeah, and the three bar looked like he might have wanted something else after that three bar, but kept it clean. Rolling through. And look how he just cranks this. He almost looks at the landing and then keeps cranking. Yeah, he kind of spins and then he yeah, just rotation whaps. stalls and then he throws yeah. his head into the rotation again. a different style than usual, but he's just so solid on that bike. <laughs> yeah, the impact dislodged a seagull, yeah. didn't it? <laughs> okay, so Marcel Hunt on a 63, not 63, quite yeah. as tidy as that first round. I think the risk of the seven further up the course, potentially. Yeah, yep, so that would have scored higher and then the bobble on the seven at the end, casing. Yeah. 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 Talked about him losing the love. He yeah. rediscovered it in Canada, moved over to British Columbia, and yeah. Got on him for still throwing that seven, though. He said he didn't think he had the speed, but he just decided to throw it. Yeah. Committed. Now, Lucas Schaefer, one of, well, the rider's rider. So, so stylish. Yeah. Pole tap on the way in. 3 1 can down. Just styling over that roller there. Backing up with the flip can on the next one. Oh, wanted to go for the three table by looks, but still managed to steeze it a bit there. Oppo three on the hip. Fast plant three up. Can down. Cool to see people mixing it up there with the can, Sebad. Tucked down, just cruising by the look of it. 
Three time down, signature. And just cruising. Oh, a little bit of a He was. He seemed pretty happy with his first run, though. So it definitely. Looking at what he'd done in practice to the first run, he definitely stretched himself there. So, yeah, more of a coaster. Dare I say it, more, a lot more of the flowy kind of riding we're used to seeing from Lucas. Yep. I mean, you just got to watch, like, even him hopping into that, you know, first step down there, just shows the style, and then, like, over that roller, just good to watch. He's one of the most passionate bike riders I've ever come across as well. Absolutely loves riding bikes. Yep, big in the trail scene, you can just tell by the way he rides. So, big smile from Lucas Shea for that. He's enjoyed himself out here today. Looking out over Road to Rue, we head back up to the top of this Maxis slope style course where the Swiss, Lucas Hoover, is getting ready to go. Dries his hands off on the sawdust in the corner of the gate there. Get it, boys. Fun, joy. See you at the bottom. A couple of nervous ticks there. Yep. Drop it in. Starting off with that three whip again. Perfect again. Whipping the long and low. Into the fronty bar again. Lands it way cleaner this time. Cork seven on the hill. Oh! oh. Over rotated. That was starting to look like a really, really solid yeah. run. <laughs> Dances it out. Yeah. That just shows tricking on a hip like that just makes everything a little bit harder, you know? You've got it. And the angle that we've got on it, you can't quite see how much of a bend there is between the takeoff and the landing. And once you start rotating, big spins like sevens, then you really are risking getting that angle right. Yeah. But the fronty. Like really clean that up from the last run there. Here's that seven, super cork. Looking right down behind his right heel as he right. took off. Just slightly over there. Doesn't take much to wash out. 10, 20 centimeters, yep. four, four to six inches. But we might see him uh, drop, we see him dropping in there. He's at the place where he can start in again and get to the bottom. So he's going down through the rest of the course. Valley was coming in a little bit slow there, but slid out of it beautifully. Yeah, the little hop off the bike gave him a couple of extra inches to uh, bump yeah. slide into that one. He seems in good spirits. Okay, we're starting to get to the business end of the second runs here at the Maxis Slope Style in memory of Magaza. Got a few riders down. We have just five left to drop. Paul Kudel, he was fifth after the first run. And there were real signs in this run, Connor, that he had podium potential. Yep. So there's a few things he could clean up, and just simple things like that would get him a better score, I feel. And I'm sure he's got more tricks in the bag as well. Yeah, he doesn't look like he's going to coast this one at all. No. So starting off again with that flip, but way cleaner than his first run. Into the flip, one foot can. Cranking him for that double. Beautiful. Three one hand, opposite three one hand X again. Oh, and he's skipping on the bike there. You can see three the up. rhythms working for him. There's an energy and an urgency to this run. Three one five. Oh, that was going to be a huge one. He's given oh. thumbs up straight away to the medical team. He's safe. He's right. That probably would have been hard on his sore wrist there. Oh, yeah. You said earlier on that. He's yeah. going to have to go back and have surgery when yeah. he gets home on that wrist. He's all right, though. Always scary falling when you're that high up as well. Might struggle to get his bike out there, stuck in between the boards. I think that was shaping up for a pretty big run there. That was huge. Yeah. As you said, he tidied up so much of it. Yeah, and he was adding that free whip in up onto the drop, and he only... I say only. He flat flipped out, makes huge drop, but we know he's got more. Oh. So just just a little bit untidy on the catch, not too bad, but that combined with the case and being slightly offside the bike. And that's a perfect example of why 
spinning onto any of those raised features is so, so dangerous yeah. because you only need to drift a little bit. If you can't spin without traveling left or right, then you risk doing that. Yep, and that, I imagine, scores well for the judges because they'll understand they're tricking up onto that as a big risk. Yeah, drifting to the rider's left there, he managed to catch the fence, and that was the end of the run. We watch your court. But this man, he was in fourth after his first run, and that is exactly where he finished in British Columbia in the slope. Yeah. It, and that was his first event, let's not forget. Incredibly strong rider who's really making a name for himself. This is his breakout season in 2021. Griffin Paulson dropping it. Big funny game, perfect again. Into the back here. So the double back. Oh. Flip double whip on the hip. Just resetting there. Oppo three up, bar down. Chucking up. Look at that, Thomas Lemoyne going out to congratulate him. A massive, massive run on the cards. They just couldn't finish it. And a fronty on a drop that big, that is huge. Griffin Paulson, okay, I'm gonna put you on the spot, Conrad. Was it a run worthy of the podium? It would have had to have been in the 90s. 92 is our cutoff spot I, at the moment. I think it potentially would have been if he had, if he had landed there. And I mean, he did a three double whip at the end. Maybe he would have done it again, maybe it's something different. I feel he's got more as well there. Like, he, you know, we know he's got those double flip combos, but this, this is huge as well. Pretty high up the course, flip double whip and on the hip as well. Yeah, so it's it's got that rotation element from the whip and he's got to line it up perfectly. We've actually missed the fact that he spun onto the surgeon's table, exactly yeah. where we saw Paul Couder go down. So the risk factor from that, the judges would have cranked up, but this is where it went wrong. Just slight under rotation there. Manual down. Look at his eyes. Oh, you see the whites of his eyes. He knew what was coming. And Regakin losing his mind there. Well, I think we know this man's here to stay on the world tour. Ah, it'll happen, man. Let's go. Hey. Thank you. <laughs> so. We've just had confirmation through from the Stargate that Max Fredrickson will not be taking his second run. Very, very happy with his 88. So we have two riders left to drop, Nikolai Rogatkin and Emil Johansson. Rogatkin currently in third. He's guaranteed a spot on the podium, but we heard him bill it. This is the run of doom. He wants this one, 92 points. He only needs 1.25 to overhaul Branger in second place. But can he stretch it out? Will the run of doom give him three and a half points and allow him to reel in Emil Johansson and spoil the Triple Crown party? So dropping here, starting off the same. Cork 7, perfect landing again. Mechanical on those. And a huge moto and start. Superman Sugo one-hander, cranking in. Twister. Up at the top of the West course. Top, always look like Into the in. cash roll. So already we've got more risk, more technicality at the top of the course. Yeah. Whipping up, three down. Bring it in, tuck up. Three X down. Oh my goodness. So close to landing that as well. Emil Johansson knows what this means. That was a huge run, Connor. That was absolute madness. And to be fair, doing a Superman front flip on a long and low like that is insane. Ridiculous. And you can see the frustration in and the we... body language from Nikolai Rogatkin. Absolute madness. Scenes here in Rotorua at the Maxis Slope style in memory of Magaza. Rogatkin just turning it up to 11. Yeah, the runner, Doom, and we saw the twister up top, so we know what he was going for on that bottom one. I 
honestly, I've got I've got goosebumps right now just thinking about what that score could have been. But it means that this is a victory lap for Emil Johansson. There will be two names on the Triple Crown trophy. Emil Johansson, the 23-year-old seed who has dominated slow style so consummately over the last two seasons will win all three Crankworks events in 2021. Yeah, man. This is a dangerous yeah, run. You can see it sinking in for him. Just a leap. Yeah, I, I want to see him float through this oh, one. Styling through there, big 360. Just enjoying the moment. No need to do anything too crazy. Just styling out. This is actually a joyous thing in itself, watching Emilio Hansen ride for fun. Yeah. Little celebration. <laughs> well, no, I think More he's relief, sick again. It? He's kind of ridden a bit now. He's realised once again, what I'm a that? triple crown winner. He's talking it all in right now. This is sick. Just dropping down into this natural amphitheatre in front of the few cat fans who are COVID safe here in Rotorua. Oh, just finishing it off. Massive three on turn down. <laughs> all the boys coming out to celebrate. Oh, he's spinning down. Fucking is three bucks, my young king! And that's what it means. You could have forgiven Nikolai Rogatkin for wanting to keep his as the only name on that Triple Crown trophy. Instead, he's one of the most passionate men in celebrating with Emilio Hansen. Max Fredrickson, fellow Swede, comes over for a big embrace. With great pleasure. I present to you, my brother. So, the yes, only sir! previous winner of the Triple Crown hands it over to Emilio Hansen. Yes! To Leviathans of Slope Style take their place in history. Nikolai's, Nikolai Rogankin's name is already on that trophy. And now Emilio Hansen joins him. Only fitting, a lot of people say it probably should have been on there in 2020 were it not for the pandemic. But now in 2021, he makes it. And a shake of the hand there. And the $25,000 trophy. That is a title you want to take. Emilio Hansen makes history here in Rotorua. A phenomenal performance, applauded by his peers. Look at Rogakin. Rogakin looks as excited as if he'd won himself. Oh, very cool. Very cool. I mean, we're talking about, we've got 13 of the best riders in the world here. And Emil, he hasn't made it look easy, but he didn't put a foot wrong. And just to finish off there, we saw him take a victory lap, but still styling all the way down. And just sliding out. I always feel just a bit of relief, a bit of excitement there at the end. Pretty, like, unbelievable for him, I'd say. A lot of riders struggled with the lack of practice here. We, yep. We'd have probably 10 to 15 runs if the rider was working hard. And yet Johansson comes out and he did not, let alone put a foot or a hand wrong, he didn't, there wasn't a hair out of place on those runs. Yep, that just shows how dull he is and, you know, he's worked hard for it, so he deserves everything that he's getting. And at just 23 years old, you feel like we're at just the beginning of a long period of domination here. It's going to be a big step up for the likes of Griffin Paulson to reel in Emil Johansson now. Yep, and then the likes of um, Timothy, Timothy Bringer get, getting second there. That's a huge result for him. That was massive, wasn't it? What was lovely as well about that, you couldn't have had two more different runs. If you're comparing and contrasting Emil Johansson, that, as we said, it's so immaculate yep. with that really fast and loose way that Tim Bringer was playing. So we're seeing the slow-mos there of Emil. We can go down into the finish area. We've got the headset on the man of the moment. I mean, the second Triple Crown winner in history. Emil, congratulations. A phenomenal performance. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, you had, how many runs do you think you had in practice to get ready, ready for the finals? Uh, it's a tough one, like a very tough one to calculate. Probably, I don't know, about 20, 25 uh, maximum, I think so. 
it's a difficult one to get ready for, for sure. And yet it didn't look like there was a foot or a hand out of place in your first run. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> is that consistency something that's come with, with age or is it something that you've been working really hard at? Oh, it just comes down to hard work. Honestly, it's uh, nothing else that will get it to that level unless you work for it. So it's a lot of hours getting here. Um, and what does it mean to you to get your name on the Triple Crown alongside Nikolai? Uh, I'm honestly speechless. Uh, I will have let. I would need to let this settle for a bit. Like, it's almost like a dream. It doesn't feel real. So I'm barely like it's. Almost like it's too big to almost even be em emotional about it. Like it's, yeah, I'll have to let it sink in. Uh, what did Nikolai say to you when he ran over to you at the bottom? Uh, Whee! Thank you. Congrats, can you repeat I it? Oh, I, I, I barely can. It's just like so much going on in my head right now. <laughs> Fantastic. We'll let you start to absorb this win. Congratulations, Emil. That was not just an incredible performance today, but a phenomenal performance in 2021. Thank you very much. Take a breath, everyone. What a performance. Confirmation of those standings. A phenomenal performance from Emil Johansson, but you flagged it. A brilliant performance from Timothy Brangier, the Frenchman there, for second place on a 93.25. Nikolai Rogatkin on 92. And Max Fredrickson, a fourth place after two 12s. That result will make him, I think, very, very happy. Yep, for sure. And then don't forget Lemoyne as well, coming back off a of, you know, knee surgery. He's got to be stoked sitting in fifth there. Truly breathtaking, yeah. A couple of really good rookie placings there as well for Marcel Hunt, uh, Lucas Schaefer and Bernd Winkler. Now we're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, we'll have the post show. We'll be crowning the king and queen of Crankworx. And of course, we'll have the prize giving from the Maxis Slope Style in memory of Kelly McGarry. What a fantastic day. We'll see you shortly. Up your tires for the Bike Channel on Red Bull TV. And check out the best live events, feature films, and shows. Download the Red Bull TV app for free. And sign in to watch all of our content offline. Download the app now. Ready for a ride in style? A free ride mountain bike film combining progressive riding with cutting edge filmmaking. Once you start something, you gotta go all the way in. It's such a satisfying feeling. It's really hard to explain. A film oozing with the effortless style of some of the most talented riders of the Coastal Crew. Motive, now available on Red Bull TV. Fear. A constant companion that even the mountain bike elite have to deal with. And your mind just starts kind of playing tricks on you because you can't do anything. Three, two, one, go, go. Delve deep into the psyche of the athletes. <laughs> and get to know one of their biggest driving forces. Reverence, a journey into fear. Now available on Red Bull TV. Okay, I think we've all had a little bit of time to get our adrenaline under control after a fantastic finish. Nikolai Rogatkin so close to delivering on his run of doom that would have denied Emil Johansson the triple crown, but instead he fell at the last hurdle. And now Emil Johansson will join Nikola, uh, Nikolai Rogatkin on the triple crown trophy. There's the leaderboard. Emil Johansson again Two and a half points clear of second place. In this time, though, instead of Eric Fedko, who we saw in BC, is Timothy Branger. Uh, Eric Fedko this time down in ninth. Lucas Schaefer, Marcel Hunt, Bert Winkler, the Crankworks rookies, enjoying themselves, but uh, just getting a bit of experience there. So, Emil Johansson, first run and done. It, it was a phenomenal performance, almost perfection. Yep, I mean, he did what he needed to do in the first run. Got a super solid run down. Um, 
But yeah, we'll have a look back through. There's a three bar downward. And it's Land. so crisp yeah, the way he perfect. catches, and he lands straight. Free bar to Unturned. And now that might look normal, but on a jump like that, it's insane. And then straight into that opposite triple whip. And it wasn't actually an easy landing, but he made it look smooth somehow. Still managed to carry that run on there. A little nolly three down, even small things like that. Opposite truck up to flip down. And you've said it, it's a really eclectic mix. There's nothing simple. Everything's got a little bit of flair or detail to it. And then, like to that, opposite 360, opposite double work. Just absolutely yeah. next level. And that's what it meant to all of the riders. Yes. Emilia, on the last run, he took his victory lap and he just coasted down. But he actually had to stop up at the, in the middle of the run to actually let it all sink in. Yep, take a wee breather and, and then reset and keep going. It's it's a huge achievement for him, isn't it? Yeah, it just shows what it means to him as well to have to stop mid-run and collect your thoughts. And, you know, it is a massive achievement. Only the second person to get that triple crown and then another win under his belt. 17, 18 years old, he started coming through and then all of a sudden he has this almost career-ending autoimmune disease, but he pulls back from that and this, this feels like the end of that comeback now. He's really cemented his position at the top of slope style. Yep, I mean, and to win, to get your name on that triple crown along with Regak in there, that's, yeah, he's 100% cemented himself in there as one of the top slope stylers. Okay, let's take a look at the overall slope style world championship. A clean sweep. Three wins from three, 3,000 points. Nikolai Rogatkin sneaks into second there, just ahead of Eric Fedko. That uh, poor performance there from Fedko in the second run means that he drops out of second. Timothy Branger jumps up into fourth place, though, and Thomas Lemoyne, his result not hurting him either. That is your top five. Keep an eye on Paul Coudeur as well, though. Frenchman looking very, very strong for next year. And it's worth remembering as well that the top six automatically qualify for the 2022 Crankworks World Tour. So those ones can relax. The rest of them, Griffin Paulson got to find his way back, as has the likes of Tommy G and uh, Toccato Testa. I mean, those are big names that have got to fight their way back onto the yep. tour. Yep, people that have got huge tricks as well. OK, we can take a look now at the Maxis slope style in memory of Magaza podium here. Nikolai Rogatkin receiving the bronze medal. Yes, bro. Looks Thank so you. stoked about it. Timothy Branger, he's ridden speed and style. He's rid ridden slope, relatively new still to crankwork slope style, and yet here he is up on the podium in Rotorua. And there you have it, Emilio Hansen, his third gold in his, his third gold in 2021 from three events, but his sixth gold in six, ive six events since September 2019. Joyride 2019, he has won every single Crankwork slope style event. This man is totally and utterly dominant in slope style right now. It's worth, it's worth pointing out that we are watching a master at work. He is in his absolute zenith of his career now. And the fact that he's 23 means that we could be watching this for another three or four Should years. Should have a long one ahead of him, yep. Wow. Here comes the champagne. The champagne throw invented in Le Mans in 1921. And it's been enjoyed ever since. Look at Emilio Hansen. He's soaking this one up. A truly phenomenal performance, Connor. Yep, I mean, just showing his class there. And I feel uh, if he needed to, he'd probably had more in the tank. So, he's, you know, for next year, all, everyone else is going to have to step up their game as well. Yeah, there's yet more pressure on top of him. Crankworks in New Zealand is far from done, though. Coming up in early December, we have the Summer Series, where we take in four destinations, Alexandra, Queenstown, Kadrona, and Glendu Bike Park in Wanaka. So it's going to be a fantastic series and it's open in a way you can actually register to compete in some of those. So you'd be going up against some of New Zealand's finest and some of the world's finest. I know that the king of Crankworks, Bass Van Steenbergen, is going to be there. So we've got that to look forward to and we'll be coming live from Bike Glendu and Queenstown during that session. 
So Emilio Hansen gets familiar with that. Not only the Maxis slope style in memory of Magaza Trophy, but also the Triple Crown Trophy. The boy's got some excess baggage when he goes home from New Zealand. That is for sure. A huge congratulations to Emilio Hansen. But from here in Rotorua, the third and final Crankworks of the year. It's time to say goodbye. Thank you for joining us. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as we have. to ask around we getting it my skills pay me trying to get a million baby with an adopted flow that god gave me me now tell whoever run us that they spot us temporary till i take it it's mine i'm selfish your will tell me some of my wealth tip so when we cash out soon i'm just investing hey, no yes man i've been a legend since before mom and dad had me and was best friends i too through cop don't test them i i too on trash because after that i bless them i just do what i do See me? I just do what I do. <laughs> I just do what I do. I don't know about you. I just do what I do. Check.